2021. We need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we are missing two members. Uh, this would be the time when we would normally go into an executive session, but we're not going to do that missing two members. Uh, so we will start talking about, uh, this is very hard missing two members. Uh, Tom, there was confusion as to whether we were actually going to start at 3.30 because the people weren't coming for interviews or not. So that's part of the issue at the moment. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we never change the meeting. So the meeting has to look at the show. It's like the show must go on. No, I, I understand that. But we're, okay. see, we're, you know, we're missing uh, two members. So that's a... That's uh, a no, one, one member has a, 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 an excuse for a family member. Uh, I'm just thinking about what we could do with three people. That would be fun. <laughs> Because some of these are victims and some of these are Norris. I don't want to, you know, uh, get into something. All right, and the new business, 2A, scheduling a public hearing uh, for the Community Development Block Grant Program. This is on for the regular meeting. Uh, Dan Sarnoff, could you explain this to us a bit? Sure. Um, the uh, triennial uh, opportunity for community development block grant funding is open up again for the village and members of what's known as the Urban County Consortium. Uh, had a conversation with uh, our community liaison from county planning and uh, he requested that we hold a public hearing in April, uh, not to submit specific applications, but rather to hear comments from the community for the village and the not-for-profits that are eligible to submit grant applications. Uh, so this is part of that process. Um, I, I think I may, you know, in my monthly reports talked about CDBG. Uh, you know, the projects I think, you know, the village would be most interested in looking to implement would be infrastructure improvement projects in our low to moderate income areas. Uh, and specifically, you know, we have the report from the uh, Traffic Safety Commission as it relates to the Mamaroneck Avenue School pedestrian improvements. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got a CDBG grant, CDBG grant to do the first phase, but there are several additional phases we could uh, seek uh, funds for in the ensuing years. And, but uh, again, you know, we can, uh, you know, solicit those comments from the public at, the, at a public hearing. And uh, uh, sixth, we are, we are good for grants up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, a maximum of four. Um, you know, just for the board's edification, the community's edification, the village has literally received millions of dollars over the last you know probably forty years that this program has been in effect uh, through the Urban County Consortium. Uh, you know, when I was discussing this the other day in my meeting with the our community liaison from the county, he was. Uh, uh, you know, motivated to get the actual number, but uh, I, I know without, you know, batting an eye, it's well into the, you know, well over two to three million dollars. It's we've, it's been a tremendous benefit for the village. Yes, Trustee uh, Nettis. Uh, <clears throat> I think the program is a great program, and we should obviously take advantage of it. I just would want to make sure that the <clears throat> whatever we end up doing for submission uh, <clears throat> gets ranked in terms of priorities, um, you know, for say, for regulatory compliance, safety, et cetera. Um, you know, uh, there are lots of good programs, um, but we have some that I think are, are more attuned to um, safety than, than not in terms of uh, issues that uh, are ongoing. Yeah. So, okay, so Dan, we, we have to have uh, the hearing. The county wants us to have the hearing before May, right? Well, there, yeah, there's a hearing to solicit comment. And then uh, once applications are ready, uh, they're supposed to be presented to the village board. Uh, any project the village would look to implement, 
would require a uh, village board resolution. Uh, any project uh, that would be undertaken by a not-for-profit in the village, they would have to report on that to the board at a public meeting, at the public meeting. And I know there are not-for-profits who have already contacted me for support for uh, their projects. Uh, yeah, we yeah, had a conference call last week with um, the Housing Alliance, with the um, Community Recreation Center. Uh, I did invite some other churches and other agencies, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think they were able to make, all able to make it. So I know STEM is uh, doing one too. Okay. Uh, all right, so what, what, we'll, what we'll be doing at the regular board meeting is just scheduling a hearing for the 28th. That, the that's 26th. 26th. 26th, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So is everybody all right for this being on for the regular meeting to schedule a hearing? I have yeah. no problem for that. That's fine. Good. Well, there you go. Got something done there. Uh, everything else is kind of. Uh, give me a second. Uh, 1L, do we have any information? Uh, I think there was some emails about where, uh, the, uh, where the Arts Council and the Tree Committee was thinking about placing this. Wasn't it in, uh, in the West Basin by the Rushmore sign? That, that was my understanding from the emails, yes. So we're waiting for uh, further clarification of that yeah I mean I don't think we ever got a map with exactly where they want to put it but we know generally where they want to put it and I think it was near the um the county project right what do you mean the county project the, that that uh that the water station. water the facility pump. at near the Orienta and Rushmore you talk about the pump station on, on yeah the yeah. What they've upgraded over the last uh, two to three years. Okay. I mean, that's closer to the post road corner of things, but. And I know that they had talked to Carl uh, Brown Conservancy too. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. Put their two cents in. Yep. So we are waiting for more information on that. Yeah. And that's where we are with that. Yeah, I think I think there's a designated easement area. I, I can't recall seeing the map recently, but you know, so we want to make them aware of, of what that easement area is. The easement for the county for the uh, pump yeah. station. Yes, I think it's it's yeah. Yeah, I, I thought the easement kind of went in the direction of the pump station. I thought, and I thought that the, uh, the proposed. Uh, Memorial would go in the direction of uh, kind of like the the Rushmore playground. Okay. You know, in that you know, in that area. <clears throat> I'm sure the uh, parks people could give them a hand figuring it out too. Um, everything else here, you know, I don't know. You want to talk about the water quality committee? One uh, H. I, I think, I mean, I could be wrong on this, but what it seemed to me, the Water Quality Committee was, you know, was supposed to elicit uh, membership from ZBA, Planning Board, uh, HZMC, maybe a couple of other committees, and uh, nobody wanted the extra responsibility. That was my experience on the ZBA. Um, I don't think the committee has met in years, maybe? Certainly, many, many months. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a minute. And it, uh, I don't know that we have members to it anymore. I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the question is, do we want to reconstitute as a separate committee and try and find people who would like to serve or actually take that and put it into one of the other committees as a, a very specific function to follow up on? Well, I, I think we should, we might want to ask 
you know, instead of going to the zoning and the planning and the ACTMC, <coughs> people who, you know, are already giving a great deal of time and energy to this community, uh, we, we might want to ask the public if, uh, you know, there are people interested who have, uh, who have some background too, you know, who, who, who have some uh, caring uh, and background who might want to volunteer. Because I, I think the idea, it was a good idea to ask people on those boards and committees to do it. But, you know, we're asking people to do a lot. You know, the people uh, were already spending two, two nights a week, two nights a month out of the house and uh, then doing all that time preparing. Uh, I'm sure they're not looking for a meeting. They wanted more meetings, they could run it to the board. And uh, so I, I, I think that we should maybe put out some information on the village uh, blast and ask people if they have interest in serving. Does that sound good to you too, folks? Yeah, that sounds like a reasonable. I don't, have a, problem. I don't have a problem with that. Okay, Sally, could you make an order that, please? Got it, Mayor. And, and, I, and there's nothing else on here that we can do without Nora Vic, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it wouldn't be fair to talk about any of these. I mean, you know, there's a big, you know, 1A, we can't do it without Jerry because that was Jerry's. Uh, review of village code, that's Nora's. You know, and the rest of them, I, I want their input. You know, it's, it's, they're not insignificant as I call them layups. Okay, you no, know, we can do this, right? 2B, access to justice during the COVID-19 pandemic on for the regular meeting. Uh, well, I think Victor wanted to have somebody come at 6.40. All right, so we won't do that. Yeah, I, I think the best thing to do now would be to adjourn for a while and to come back when we have at least one other member. Because I, I, it doesn't, it's not fair to have these discussions about, you know, momentous uh, laws with just three of us. All right, you know, I'll just, I don't know that the Army Corps of Engineers project is gonna be controversial. I mean, I think the county is looking to request, you know, the Army Corps to get back on this project. Um, and at one point, uh, Senator Schumer's office, the aide who came and spoke with us, Megan, had said, you know, hey, just if the village could send in a letter reaffirming its interest in this project to just say, we're, you know, we're still hoping this will go forward, it would be helpful. I, don't, I like, Kelly, I liked your language that, you know, you had sent in the email. Um, you know, um, what has, to, what I understand is it has, to, the core has to Re, uh, reaffirm their or, or re-update their numbers because of the time lapse. It's okay, so why don't we take the, the language that Kelly crafted in her email and Dan, if you could take the resolution that the village board passed a couple of years ago or I forget how long ago and include that in a, uh, a letter to the county, you know, CCing uh, the Army Corps and Catherine Parker yeah. But I'd like to include and have the core update their materials. Okay. Because the core, the core, from what I understand from the core, that would be helpful to them. Okay. That's yeah, I, I think, in fact, the county is going to ask them to look at the formula they use for calculating. I mean, I think they're just saying this got real, sidetracked during um, a former administration, perhaps because of some political pressure, and we want you to restart this. Yeah, actually that the BOT or the Bureau of the Budget, whatever they're- uh, OMB. OMB. Uh, you know, found that that was not cost effective, but was not going to stand in their way. Um, and they, those who were doing the allocations did not actually get to the end of the list of those that were at least from what I've been told, those that were um, cost effective that met the formulas. So um, I've, you know, in my conversations with others, I've been told that they need 
you know, that they have to revisit that and update the numbers because it's more than a year old. Okay. All right. So I, I'm fine with all of the suggested changes and with Kelly's and we send along uh, the resolution that we passed a couple of years ago. Uh, Dan, if you could get that out. Yep. I, I assume, you know what they say, I assume bad assume, but more sent to all of our state elected and federal elected officials, correct? Yes. Okay. The, the whole McGill. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The whole, uh, yeah. Everybody uh, above me, which is a lot of people. Uh, okay. But that was good. Um, I don't see anything else here we could really do substantive work on. All right. Make a motion we adjourn uh, until such time uh, as we get another trustee or at five o'clock when uh, one of the trustees will join us and at least we'll have- Tom, Tom, can I suggest instead of saying adjourn to recess? Uh, fine, yeah. We're gonna take a short recess until uh, we get another member. We don't even have to vote on it. All right. Um, I'm going to step away from the computer. Will someone uh, someone shoot me a text if we grab a fourth? Got it. Sure. All right. I'm just going to keep it on. Just okay. Uh, same here, but I, I have other things to do, so I'm going to go do them. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'll second that motion to recess. Let me. Tom's trying to see if anybody's muted. We don't need a vote to recess. Okay. All right. Then we're recessing. Goodbye. Behave yourself to the recess.
Hi, all. Hello. Whoever hosting, I can't uh, put my uh, visual on. Put your little camera at the bottom, Dan. You see the video? I did that, but it says the host will not allow it. Oh. Now oh, it's there going. You too. Thank you, Karen. Have a great night. I will see you on Wednesday. Okay. John Landis. Cliff is still here. Okay. Are we live? Cliff, we're live, right? Yes, we're live. Okay. Hi. Good evening. And we are resuming. Uh, Village of America Board of Trustees work session. Uh, I'm sorry for any confusion about before. Um, I had assumed that we were going to uh, meet and discuss uh, the agenda. Uh, I can see where confusion came up. Um, just so the victor's benefit and for uh, the, the people watching at home, uh, we did discuss a few items on the agenda. Uh, Right. Item 1H, uh, Water Quality Committee. Uh, we we, we uh, talked about having uh, Sally ask the public uh, if they have interest in joining the Water Quality Committee. Uh, we briefly talked item 1L, location and funding opportunities for a living memorial, but uh, that's going to have to wait until we get more information from uh, the uh, Arts Council and from the Tree Committee. Uh, we, we decided to go ahead uh, with scheduling uh, the public hearing for the Community Development Block Grant, which is on for the regular meeting. And we briefly talked about the Army Corps of Engineers project and uh, having Dan Sonoff send a letter affirming our interest in the same. So, you know, everything that, everything that uh, was of substance and, you know, especially the laws and stuff, we left on the agenda. Nobody touched it. We did, we did the layups, as I would say. Uh, okay, that being said, okay, uh, I think it's the board's, I think uh, trustee uh, Lucas uh, might have difficulty getting on until later on or at all tonight. So uh, really can't wait for that. So we need motions to go into executive session. We'll do them one at a time because not everybody can vote on every motion. So move. What do you mean so move? We haven't done anything yet. Well, I'll, I'll bring a motion that we enter executive session on ABC properties versus Village of Ameranek. <coughs> anticipated that we will enter into executive session pursuant to 105.1D of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters of current litigation and or 1051F of the public officer's law as it relates to the appointment of a particular person or corporation. I'll second that motion. Or equal. Trustee Winstrup? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Staying. Trustee Kafour? Vicki Muted? Yes. Thank you. Mayor Murphy? Hi. And Trustee Lucas is excused. Uh, the next item uh, that I believe Trustee Lucas wanted to talk about had to do with uh, Save the Sound litigation. Uh, so that would be under 105.1F also. Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Policino? Trustees Weintrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The four? I'm recused. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you. Uh, the next item I wanted to talk about was 130 Beach Avenue. Uh, I, it's also to discuss uh, litigation. Uh, Tikert versus uh, the village of Mamaroneck and whether 
the, the you know, what the board wants to do moving forward. Uh, under 105, one hundred five one d of the New York State Public Officers Act. I'll make that motion. Um, yes, with the understanding that that will include current litigation as well as potential litigation. Second. Orgy. Trustees Weintraub? Yes. Hatches? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Uh, Dan, did you want to bring a motion? Uh, to go into executive session under 105.1F, I believe it is, uh, bring a uh, full-time uh, full village attorney. I'll say. Well, Trustees Winter? Yes. Natchez? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Just so it, we, for the record, uh, I'm recused on the ABC matter. I'm not sure what you're talking about, but in the interest of making sure that I'm not going afoul of anything, I'm recusing. All right, Dan, you know what? So don't get into the executive session yet. I'll call you after we're done with that. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Right, let's go to the executive session.
вот если. Вот, вот, вот. Okay. Good evening. Uh, once again, continuing with the Board of Trustees of the Board of Mary. Work session for uh, April 12, 2021. We've just come out of executive session. Uh, in executive session, there was a vote and a motion of uh, Trustee Winstrup, seconded by myself. Uh, to pursue civil penalties against Wondery Beach Avenue for violation of Village of Mimari, uh, building codes. Uh, uh, 211, uh, Trustee Lucas recused. Uh, to four abstain, Trustee Natchez voted no, and myself and Ms. Wenstrup uh, voted yes. And that's good, all the reporting uh, from the executive session. Uh, okay, back to our agenda. Uh, item 1A of all business is something that's going to have to wait for the village manager when he gets back uh, in May. Uh, let's go right to item 1B. Review of village code to include requirements for fair and affordable housing. Uh, Nora, you want to start with this? This is something you wanted to talk about. Yeah, so thanks. I would like to. So um, we did, um, you know, include a fair and affordable housing requirements when we did the um, the post moratorium zoning. Um, I'm sorry, Nora, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just let me interrupt you for one second because I have to do something administratively. Okay. There, was a, there was another vote uh, in executive session. Uh, Kelly made the motion. I seconded it. Uh, and the vote was to hire uh, the law firm. Uh, I will get this in a second. Kaufman, Dolowich, Volk, uh, to represent the village of Mamaronic in the matter of the application of ABC Properties LLC. I'm sorry. Uh, I just I didn't want to not report it out. And it skipped my mind. Thank you, Augie, for letting me know. I'm sorry, Nora. Please continue. That's okay. So thanks. So anyway, so we did incorporate, um, we did require that developers include affordable housing, fair and affordable housing in, in our in our multifamily districts, or at least the districts that we rezoned during the post moratorium. But I think it's something that we should be considering um, throughout the village for any kind of a residential development that there would be some kind of affordable housing. So I would just like to start that conversation for a, because the model law isn't just for multifamily housing, it's for all sorts of housing developments. So I would just like to start the conversation and um, I think I tried to start it quite a while ago, but we've had a pretty full series of executive sessions. But I, 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 wanna, I think it's a good conversation to have. But my question is, I mean, would, would this mean uh, uh, like like uh, you know, five thousand square foot uh, home developments should would be able to have affordable housing? I mean, I don't understand. Well, yeah. So I think basically what it would mean, and obviously, you know look how long it took us to work on the moratorium law. So there's there's a lot of details to consider. But that, you know, let's say we pick the, the, the number of five or 10 or 15, when any residential development hits that threshold, there's a percentage of affordable housing, fair and affordable housing that's required. So, so this wouldn't be, because uh, what I don't want to do is, is, is scare people or, or undue concern people that, I mean, I don't want people to think that they live in an R5 and we're going to knock down the house next door to them and put up an affordable housing development. I just, you know, I just, I just don't want people to get the wrong idea off the bat. And that's how things get derailed. You know what I mean? And yeah. just, I mean, so it, it wouldn't change. I mean, I, I wouldn't imagine it would change any of the underlying zoning. It right. would just require, and we would have to figure out what the threshold is developments of a certain scale to incorporate affordable housing. Fair well, enough. If I was gonna, if just say there was a, a, a piece of land in a village where I could build 20 houses mm -hmm. in zoning, you, you wanna make 10% of them or 15% of them or 20% of them affordable. That, yes, and what I, I mean, I don't have a specific percentage in mind, but that's sort of the, that's the theory. 
Okay. All right. I, I, I just wanted to, even, I, I, I know whenever we talk about affordable, any community talks about affordable, uh, it tends to get uh, people misunderstanding and then, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of, and I just want to make sure that we're, we're clear. Uh, and I know you were, but I, I'm more doing this for the, as they said, people playing along in the home version. But I, there, there are some parts of this that I thought were interesting, like on page two, the incentives for creation of fair and affordable housing. And a lot of these are like the TOD incentives, right? Yeah, I mean, Okay. Yes, and I think the you know we wouldn't you know I'm not saying we adopt the model law without tailoring it to the village, but I think it's something, you know I think we did you know we made a start um, in 2019 and 2020 was kind of a year of pause, and I think it's time to try and make affordable housing a bigger portion of what we require in the village. So, Mayor, you may recall we started when we were talking about the affordable housing for the TOD that done in the law coming out of the moratorium, we started with the Westchester County Affordable Fair, Affordable Fair Housing Act, AFFH, as sort of the baseline. And then you modified it based on circumstances in the village. So it may be possible to, I have to go back and look at the zoning law, but it may be possible to just change uh, um, what that law applies to and then uh, have this requirement to apply more broadly. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you, if I don't recall, I mean, it was a while ago, you may have tailored it in such a way that you don't want it to apply as you tailored it village-wide. I don't know. I just think it's time to, 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 to think about it. And maybe we get a subgroup to think about it. I don't know. I just, I think it's... Hey, Lucas, can we start by you identifying which sections, for example, and what kind of development, just conceptualizing? I, I really, I'm really, I think it should be village wide. I mean, my, you know, I think that the whole idea about the, about the model ordinance was that it would be community wide, and so I think we need to we uh, we really applied it to certain portions of our community that have, you know, multifamily housing, sort of dense multifamily housing, and I think we should take another look. And I'm not, you know, I'm. I'm I can't say I've done a deep dive and decided, you know, where where the overlay should be, but I think that's the next step that this board should take. Maybe in conjunction with the planning board, but um, you know, I think that we have, we want to make fair and affordable housing a village commitment, and it would be appropriate to look at other areas, you know, other other zones where we could overlay this requirement. Uh, I, 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 and you know it's only going to kick in. I mean, it's, you, know, I, you know, it's not going to kick in if, if on a one-off when one person's building a house. It's when a developer is doing a larger-scale development. Of you know, I no. Um, go ahead, Tom. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kelly. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I agree. I think this is a a conversation that the board should be having, and I think that the model law, which is a great you know starting framework. Where it talks about 10 units or more is you know a, a nice ballpark area to have the discussion my real concern and this was my concern with plc is that in order to get developers to to do this um you know i i'm afraid you do need these incentives they, they really help and so higher densities easing of minimum height, bulk, and setback, and allowance for shared parking. And that's all stuff that we explicitly rejected when we talked about PLLC. So I think part of our discussion, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, now that we took those incentives out in the C1 and C2 districts, my, my concern is, let's see if anyone comes in and actually builds without these incentives. I mean, that that's what I think the wait and see will just... Mm -hmm. You know, or or are these incentives necessary in the village in order to get affordable, fair and affordable housing constructed? Yeah, I think that that's part of the conversation too. Yeah. What, what are we prepared to do and allow as a village board for the goal of having for you know fair, fair and affordable housing actually built? Uh, I mean, I, you know. It, Changing, you know, uh, I, I have no problem with uh, applying this to R5, R6, R7.5, R15. But 
the odds of there being developments of 10 units or more in those zones, you know, there's very, very little property left to do that. Uh, and so I, I can't see you know, that you know, happening in the, in the near future. So I, I, I think, you know, to Kelly's point, you know, we, we have to look at where this potentially could go and see what we could do you know, in, in areas that might be right for redevelopment. And not just, you know, and it, it, it would be nice to, you know, and I have no problem with saying that this, this should be a requirement if you're doing a big development in one of those residential zones. But we all know, I mean, it, it, there's, not a, there's not a big chance of that, right? It, it, unless, you know, I don't know, day school gets sold or something like that, you know? But so I, I think I'm in favor of this, but it, to, to, to make it practical, we have to make it where it's workable too, and make sure that we're, we're, we're doing the changes and encouraging people and having developers who do affordable housing come in and talk to us and ask them, what would make this more viable? I think that that's where we have to get our information. Is like if we, we really want affordable housing, you know, what will it take? Uh, what do developers who do all affordable, and that's really what I'm interested in this community is all affordable units. Uh, what would it take to get them to come in and build in our community for our residents and for folks, you know, hopefully that'll keep this a more diverse community going forward. I, I applaud you for bringing this more, it's, it's a good idea. Well, I mean, it's a good idea, and it may not, and it may not be a practical idea. It may not work out because of the extent that our community has already been developed. But I think that we wouldn't want to not have the conversation and then realize we'd missed an opportunity two or three or four years down the road. I think that's a really good point. So I'm I'm fine for keeping us on the agenda and keep talking about it. Maybe we can invite West Ham to come in and give us their thoughts. It's a good idea. I'll see if they want to talk to us. I mean, I'm, I don't know that it has to be on every work session agenda. And I guess, you know, we don't really have a mechanism for keeping things on the back burner while we're investigating them. Maybe we need that, but. Um, okay. I see what you're saying. Look, 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 I'll reach out to Westhead, the uh, Rich Nightingale. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, land use notification requirements. Robert? Remember this? When you were young, you wrote this? I'm sorry? When I you were young. That's right. Uh, when Greg was here, we had started working on a unified approach to notifications for zoning and land use applications that would incorporate some more modern means of providing notice, you know, not necessarily just fines and snail mail, um, and would provide folks with the ability to follow applications online uh, so that they could know when the next meeting was. The problem was that there are different notification requirements for each of the boards mm -hmm. and applications tend to proceed as in a process you know, from one board to the next. Um, so the notification process needs to reflect that and needs to, uh, uh, needs to not conflict with the varying board so that, so that folks who want to do something and, and the something could be as simple as put in a pool are not required to send multiple notices by mail and that sort of thing in an age when the internet works and, and uh, email works. Mm. It's probably a better means of providing notice. So uh, honestly, this draft was so long ago that I don't remember the details. It was a project that the board did not, uh, had, had numerous discussions about, but never ultimately moved forward. Um, I think it's a, I think it's an important effort in terms of making life easier for residents who want to make changes to their properties and at the same time, making life easier for folks who want to follow important applications that are processing through the various boards. Um, so uh, I, I would be happy to go back to it and work on it if that's what the board would like, like me to do, but it's gonna take some coordination with the other boards. 
I think we had a table. Remember Greg had done a table for us about like so we we had a table of what we proposed those deadlines to be. I honestly don't remember getting that far, but I could be wrong. And it just what happened was it was on our agenda for sometime last April, but with the pandemic we just dropped it. So um I'll do a little I'll I'll be happy to do a little more digging. Well, there was Greg did create a table uh, that uh, was thing into perspective. I think it is something that is uh, important. I'm concerned that the drafts that uh, I've seen here uh, still are using um, a certified mail where you can use an affidavit of mailing, uh, which is uh, significantly less costly and serves the same purpose. Uh, I'm concerned that the uh, <clears throat> that we have an, that the, there's a requirement. You know, it varies, but I think it's 15 days before the application uh, is heard. Uh, so many days after it's been filed, I don't remember which uh, that you have to send the notice. Uh, but then it's only a few days before the meeting that you file with the who you've noticed. If you file, if you you know, if you're going to mail it or email it, and there's nothing in there about email, um, but if you're going if you're going to undertake a notification, I don't see any reason why, you know, in you know, 24 hours you don't file it. <laughs> you already have the stuff, and it's all you know, it's it's on the desk, and it's easier just to handle immediately, you know, than not. Um, uh, I'm not sure that um, you know, what I would like, to, I'd like to see it apply to everybody, you know, across the board. Um, you know, I think that that's probably the easiest way to do it, uh, that the time requirements, you know, be the same for everybody. Um, but it, you know, that uh, it, that is explicit. Um, This goes a little bit farther than notification, but the explicit that the the can have anything the applicant is going to submit must be submitted a minimum of you know um, you know ten days prior to the meeting. This is as okay, you know, we, we, say again. Oh, no, you finish. I, I just want to make a comment after that. Yeah, we have that, but it's not followed, uh, and people walk in and you know. Saying I got something in, um, you know, it, it it's a problem because the public does not have this stuff in advance to review, and sometimes there are issues that can't be raised because of that. Uh, so I think you know we need to be clear on you know on those steps, uh, um, and uh, I would you know, but I think we you know we should move forward. I think Greg's chart makes it very easy to distinguish, you know, that, you know, why we have problems. <laughs> yes, you ask uh, if, if someone up in the planning department can find Mr. Cutler's chart? Yeah, I, I'll do that. And I was, what I was going to add is we, you know, we, we do have, you know, standing meetings with um, uh, Ashley from AKRF and Amber in our, our planning department. And, you know, this subject comes up and uh, we have been looking at recommendations to, uh, you know, simplify and you know, simplify the process and make it easier for people to understand. So uh, it has been an ongoing conversation uh, internally, despite it not being on, on a board agenda for, uh, not being heard on the board uh, meeting for a little bit. So I mean, I, I can certainly follow up with them, and I do want to loop them into this conversation. Uh, before uh, they don't want the train to leave without them being on it. Yes, we would definitely want their input. Uh, yep. Things might have changed since Mr. Cutler. Yeah. There, there's also a conflict between what was proposed and what the um, what other parts of the code say. Uh, <clears throat> part in, in the in the current draft, it says we use the County of Westchester's list for adjacent property owners. 
and the code said it has to be you know on record in the village so we have to resolve you know if you want to use the county then you got to be used the county for everything <laughs> yeah i mean i think that that's a vestige to when uh the old days when people used to come in with the compass and draw the uh, circles on the tax maps to find everything no, I, yeah. I understand that, but then, yeah. then when we switch to the GIS, uh, the village would would supply, um, you know, because it wasn't accessible to the public, the village could, you know, would supply the list. Mm -hmm. But we have to we have to decide who is going to be responsible for the list, and that list needs to be filed early on, so that if somebody said, calls up and says, "I didn't get anything," they can look at the list and see if they were on it or not. And if it wasn't properly noticed, it has to be re-noticed. It saves a lot of time and aggravation, you know, through the meeting process. I think this is an important effort. I, I've been I've been reading it when it's been on the agenda time and time again. And I thank Bob for his efforts in working on this. My only comment was going to be that um, I encourage you to continue and that I would suggest as everyone has also pointed out that you just reach out to Amber Nowak and see um, what she's doing, what she thinks would be helpful to, to move it forward. So why don't we have uh, Amber take a look at this draft that Bob came up with and you know, Bob and her can confer. And, and, uh, and, and the list, it was a spreadsheet that, that Greg did. Yeah, I, I recall, I I'll, I'll find it. And... I can't find it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure I have it in my email, and I, I, it was definitely on some old agendas. Yeah. Oh, yes, it was. Yeah. I think there may have been three or four different versions of it, so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll can go through that to make sure that uh, the versions that I supply to you don't conflict with one another. Okay. But if if yeah. you couldn't talk to Amber and others uh, regarding the draft, I would like the comments that were made tonight also presented. Anything else on this topic? No? Okay. Thank you. Yes. What? Two down. I hear we've gone through this like. Yep. I don't want to say it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just gonna think it. Just think it. They almost they almost ended up on the news right then. Uh <laughs> idle law. Um, hmm? is, is this a priority? Well, you know, we have the same. This is this is something we had talked about, and then we thought the situation was resolved, but it's been it's it's bubbled up. Um, and I actually, I think this is something that we should talk to the chief about. Um, and um, and I just had a day. I didn't have. I didn't have. I wasn't able to do to do it today. But um, the same. The situation came up over the weekend again. Um, so I think that, you know, we should see if the chief thinks that this will be beneficial in regulating the problem, which is not, you know, it's a persistent but not chronic problem. Well, it doesn't solve the problem, at least the problems that have been brought to us, because in the, in the proposed draft that's in front of us from 5 a.m., uh, you know, starting at 5 a.m., uh, uh, it's next to residential zones. It's some are in residential zones. You know, I don't believe that there, there are areas that where that could, where you can, you know, where we've been told that the trucks can be directed to in the industrial district that would not interfere. Um, and uh, I'm concerned that we all we keep doing is kicking the can down the road, but not solving the problem. So if you're going to solve the problem, then you don't have the idling, whether it's the refrigeration or the truck or the motor or both, uh, you know, in front of a residential home uh, you know, at five in the morning or six in the morning. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, there's no reason that the trucks have to be there as opposed to parked, you know, in the industrial zone waiting to come, which used to be. Um, you know, uh, and it, um, there are concerns you know, of how to enforce it and who's enforcing it. I was very disturbed by the email chain that we got. So 
So I think I, I second your uh, suggestion that we sit down with the chief about this as well, uh, because this is something that needs to be. When was there an email chain? I can't, Tom, it's very hard to hear you back there. When was there an email chain about this that you're talking about, Dan? I believe somewhere over the, within the last four or five days. I don't I, think I, 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 I haven't seen that. If so, someone could it. forward that to me, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I don't keep the emails, but I'll look forward and see if I can get it from discarded or whatever. Okay. Yeah, I, I think talking to the chief is, is, um, is important because I know when, you know, we've when I have seen email chains from Ms. Von Eif, there's a there's a question about whether the police have gone out and they've whether they've been able to do something, they have done something, they haven't done something. So maybe just everyone get on the same page about what we need to do. But to the question of whether any truck should be idling in front of a house at five or six a.m. I mean, I've said this before, Dan, but you know, Fresh Direct makes deliveries starting at five a.m. And their truck will sit in front of your house while they unload and the refrigerator component will be on because it's a frozen truck in back. And you know, it's idling for the five minutes or 10 minutes that they unload and bring it to your house. So that's to be clear, I don't think that's what we're trying to regulate out of happening. It's it's the trucks that show up and sit there and idle for half an hour or two hours. Or you know, overnight. Or yeah, overnight. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that I think maybe just by having a defined time limit would would yeah. help. Yeah, but I think talking to the police is absolutely the, the first step to see what they feel like they're able to do and what they feel I'll, like they're I'll see if I can find the email chain because that directly to that and that. Great, that'd be helpful. I definitely was not on that email chain. Uh, you know, it, you know, I, I, I hope that I, I guess, A, I don't think a law, a law is gonna fix it. Uh, I think, I think it's about, you know, talking to the owner there and enforcement. And I think, you know, this, this is one of those things that's going to turn into a Rube Goldberg. It's going to have unintended consequences. Well, I think we should ask the chief. I, I agree with that. She'll have a, she'll have the, you know, all the, all the perspective. So. No. Well, the, the last time that that was raised, Tom, the issue from that we got from the police department was if we don't have something that we can enforce, there's nothing to do. We have an idling law. We have an idling law. That they can enforce that. We have a noise code. This was a this was about leaving the refrigeration off. <laughs> So we're going to talk to the chief about this. Uh, we're going to go to the other thing. Okay, we're going to skip the, the setback from water bodies because that's obviously going to be more than the five minutes we have before the other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's go to social media policy. Soro, do you want to talk about this? But uh, when Chris came in to uh, review the village's social media policy, which was uh, adopted in January of 2015, uh, uh, it, you know, obviously things have changed over the last couple of years. Uh, you know, new apps, new trends. Uh, you know, they, what we talked about as far as our social media policy was to kind of be, have a very concise and set forth policy about what we would and would not post on social media and where. I, I think we, we try to keep it limited to, you know, village events, uh, you know, or you know, events sponsored by other governmental agencies. Uh, we try not to be in the business of promoting private events or uh, private activities because it gets to be a little bit of a slippery slope when uh, trying to choose between uh, uh, different outlets. And I think it kind of goes back to the, uh, you know, content neutral uh, view site. I mean, we've, uh, had, you know, we talked about having bilingual in there, making sure we have our copyright. Uh, I know that uh, Victor 
uh, did ask about uh, the, our social media policy. So uh, I, I don't know if there's anything specific he wanted to discuss in relation to what we have. And thank you. Uh, I think the first thing was to figure out when it had been adopted and if there was any background, which I haven't seen. So I, at least we have this policy we know from 2015. I think the main point is as you, as you, as you indicate, it's, it's been a while. Uh, and if you read it, it really looks, it looks, it looks too basic uh, to me. Uh, and what, what, I, what I did was I, I tried to see if NICOM had a, had a model, an update to see, because I know there's been case law and there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of activity. And so villages have been updating it and we haven't. So I, I think it's about time we, we take a look at what needs to be updated. Uh, one way of doing that is looking at other villages that have more recent and have done revisions. Uh, when I, as I said, I went to NICOM, they didn't have a model ordinance, but when I reached out, they did point to me a couple villages that had, had, had recent updates, which thought they could be a, a form of a reference for us. So that's something I could circulate, but I, I, I didn't want to just go ahead and, and I, and, and, and start this without uh, getting a sense of if the board thinks, it has looked at it and thinks there are, the, it needs revisions and how to organize uh, very, maybe a, kind of an approach, uh, two or three, just a group to get this done in a way that doesn't get too, too cumbersome, just to update it uh, you know, to, to the standards. That, that's, that's what I think can be done. And I could track those and circulate them uh, if the board really wants us, wants to move. Do you remember what the municipalities were, Victor? I don't recall. Okay. I, I, I would, I'd like to see what you found, Victor. And I'd like to also ask Cliff if he knows the, if, of what other communities are going. He, he's kind of on the cutting edge of it. And I know there's been legal issues. Maybe Bob has something to offer. Oh. Cases on this. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are lots of legal issues. That Dan said surround um, content neutrality, and the biggest issue is the um, the issue of what happens when you accept comments from outside the village on these uh, on these websites, if you, on, on these Facebook or you know social media posts. You know, you may recall that the big case was when uh, President Trump had his yeah had his um, social media, and then refused to allow someone he didn't like to post. And the court said he couldn't do that because he had opened it up. It's, it's simply another, you know, conceptually, it's another way of creating a public forum. And once you create a public forum, you can't shut down comment. I, this policy, it seems, it seems to me, although there's a little bit of ambiguity, suggests that only, only village officials are going to post anything on the website, not on the social media. It's not going to accept any comments. I'm not sure that's true, but it seems to say that. Um, those, are the, those are the principal legal issues regarding um, social media. I, off the top of my head, I can't tell you who has the newest or best social media policy. Yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we've looked at having uh, a Twitter, but, you know, that allows posts. So we didn't want to provide a, uh, a form for, uh, people to abuse, uh, you know, the, the elected officials, the staff, or other residents uh, on. Uh, I think with Facebook, I think uh, Sally might know where the official or the village's official page. I don't. Do we allow posts on that or? I no. don't believe that we do, Dan. No, but again, no, that's something that one. Robert yeah. handles. Yeah, I think we, recreation we, does their own. But the villages. We, we've been. Mm -hmm. we, we tried very hard to, you know, keep it a, I hate to use them, a safe place. Okay, so safe Victor, if you could send what, what you found out and if we could ask uh, Cliff to look uh, at other communities and to see if he knows anything about uh, social media policy, how other folks are doing it. I think it's worth looking if it's been from 2015. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'll circulate and from, you know, Bob can identify the legal things he's seen. Sally and you know the, the users really can identify 
what what uh, they see there and then we can pick up the main issues and then decide how to move forward with that. Let's just identify okay. where areas need to be updated, what areas are lacking, what is unclear. So that, that's the conversation that I wanted to kickstart. Okay. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll move forward. It's, it's 6.45, we're a little past. Um, so who do we have on the call, Victor? Does anybody need to be promoted? Sorry, I'm muted. I do have a, on our, we do have Allison, Caitlin, Francis, Nina listening in, they, and Todd, they have prepared the, the resolution that that is in our backup. So if you want to promote them, or in any case, I know they're, they, they're listening. Oh, you can promote those? They're flocking in. There you go. Uh, Excellent. Janet. I said Janet before. Janet, yes, Janet as well. Allison. Allison. Allison Heck, too, right? Caitlin Carpenter, of course. Yeah, she's raising her hand strongly. Okay. I, I'm not sure Sophie and Tom Kent are in for this. I, if I they saw, are, they can they can raise their hand, but I don't think so. I saw Janet Fry before, but then she dropped off. Yeah, she was just here. Uh, is anybody else there? Todd, what about Todd Freifeld? Is that one? They do Todd. We still need Kate, uh, Caitlin Carpenter. So I'm promoting Caitlin and Tom? Yeah. Yeah, he is first. Is that the whole gang? How about Sophie and Kent? Sophie Kent? Is Kate, this... Sophie Kent? I don't know if she's here for this matter. Do we know Sophie Kent? She's not here for this? All right. The, uh, Kent, the Kents are here for another matter. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So we, we do have a presentation. Uh, officially in in uh, at this 7:30 meeting, where you have the PowerPoint, but this is this is the opportunity uh, to for the board to see the resolution. So that's the purpose to have a very focused discussion of of what you intend, you know, what what's what's the the resolves and a little bit of the where where asses. But I let you take it from here on. Whoever wants to take the lead. Have any of you kids decided who's going to take the lead? Well, I can do introductions for us all, and I think okay. Caitlin can screen share the resolution. If yes. That's yes. Fine. yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so, hi, I'm Francis McDowell, and I'm here with my group members, Todd Freifeld, Allison Hecht, and we have another group member, but she's not here with us right now. Uh, and we are here as part of Maranek High School's original civics research and action program. Uh, and we are here to present to you about right to counsel. So Allison, could, if she could screen share, that would be great. Sorry, am I screen sharing or is Allison? Either yeah. is good. I have it, I'll just go for it. And I guess we can just walk through. Can everybody see this? Give a nod. Make it a little bigger, Caitlin, please. There you go. Good? Well, that's well, I'm not that one. <laughs> a little back, a little more. A little back, a little back. Oh, good. Good? Okay, and we'll, we'll scroll down. It's a little bit longer than this. Um, I guess maybe we give it a minute to read through. Or would you like me to kind of talk through as we read? Why don't you talk through? I think we've all read it, but why don't you go through it point by point? Great, absolutely. So, um, right. Hey, can I, yeah. I think we, I think we've read a previous version of this, so maybe focus on the change. Walk us through it, as the mayor suggests. Point to any to any changes because we had an earlier version. I think that will make take us there. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so we added a couple of different things. Um, just at the beginning, most of the wording is pretty much the same, but we just wanted to make sure it was super focused on right to counsel specifically, which is providing obviously um, all tenants who are in eviction proceedings with a um, with legal counsel. Um, so I think that we changed the wording here. Um, again, just to be a little bit more specific earlier this morning, I am sorry, I'm blanking on what the previous wording was, um, but just again, being more specific. And then we also, this is a very obvious thing, this list right here, um, wanted to add a little bit more context as to why right to counsel is necessary. Um, and so with that, um, we got this data, we have um, cited it here from Carl Bertrand, if you're familiar with him, he's super um, involved in the confronting homelessness within Westchester County. Um, and he was gracious enough to provide us um, with some more data to back up just what the situation right now within Westchester County, as well as in, within the village of Maranick is in terms of people who are behind on rent. Um, so I guess you can read through that. Um, yeah, a lot of people are behind on rent right now. Um, hence why there's such a need for right to counsel. Um, I guess we could pause here if there are any questions on either of those changes. Um, could, could you send that to the board if we haven't, if I, haven't I don't think I've seen that. Yes, I forwarded it um, to um, Trustee Tuffer, but um, if there's a chat here, I don't think there is a chat um, huh. to put the link to, but we can email it. Mm -hmm. Does somebody else have? I, I'll do it. I'll do yeah. it. Cool. You can just forward it. I'll do it. I mean, um, Mayor. We need it in front of us. Uh, um, uh, good, aft uh, good afternoon, everyone. Mayor Durandi Martinez, our executive director, is, as, is in the chat or in the uh, participants list as an attendee. Is okay, it well, a way that well, she can be upgraded to uh, panelists? Yeah, we'll do that right now. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm sorry Thank to you. interrupt. Okay. Should I continue? Yeah, please do. Okay, great. I'm just going to keep scrolling down. Most of this is already the exact same as we didn't change really anything um, throughout these different lines. So you can just look at them for a sec, refresh your memory. Um, obviously, this is the footnote from the part that I just went over. Um, and then in terms of um, do, 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 in terms of the bottom here, um, we did just reword, um, reworded to do we're just reordered over here so that these two are next to each other. So it's more like a cause um, because of the lack of representation, right? There is an imbalance in legal knowledge. Little thing, small detail, but just to make more sense. Um, and then in the resolves, which obviously are the most important part of this resolution, we cut out one of them so that we could get to the heart of the matter, which is we'd like um, for our local leaders um, to address the impact of eviction proceedings, right? And with that, support countywide right to counsel legislation, which goes hand in hand with addressing eviction proceedings. Um, and that is pretty much it. Those were all the changes made. Um, do we want to go over anything else? With well, I, I have a question. So are, is, is the intent of this to send it to the county board and the county executive because we want county action or is it going to the state? It would be county and it would be to the board of legislators. Okay. Maybe, maybe just to be clear on that, then the, the first resolve could say the village of Ameritic board encourages the county board of legislators and the county executive to take steps. Because local leaders is ne nebulous and it doesn't really mean elected officials. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. If only, if only we could be so efficient and good at technology in all our meetings, Caitlin, <laughs> we would be so we would be flying through our agendas. Thank you very much. Problem at all. Sorry, I didn't actually. I shouldn't have just typed that. Do, is there like a formal process for like voting on changing this, or can we? Or is it no, 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 no. Right now, you can change. You can change anything at this point. Correct. Uh, we're, we're, it's a work session, and we're going to vote on it later on tonight. Well, we, we, so send us the changed copies, right? You send it to mayor and board at bomny.org. Yeah. And Kathleen, actually you can remove that. 
Uh, we, we typically don't use that. Don't remove the date. Remove the date. So just Therefore, the village of Mamaronek, you'd say the village of Mamaronek Board of Trustees, add Board of Trustees, resolves as follows. Right. And then the first one we already touched. I think the second one needs a bit the village board of trustee, the village of Amaronic board. See, there's a board missing, right? Encourages the Westchester Board of Elections to pass legislation. Tenants on the right to council. Um, finish it off on eviction proceedings in the county. It's a suggestion for my do, colleagues. Do you do you need in there in that last resolution um, any kind of a, um, a reference to the county executive? Does he have to take an action on any legislation that's passed? And if so, do you want to include language that would encourage the county exec to affirm or whatever his role is? Well, he, he has to sign. He has to legislation. sign. Yeah. He has to sign. I would, we, we could add a reference to, to mention the the the, ex, the executive. Well, he so, is mentioned in the first resolved. Mm -hmm. That's Addressing why I, that's why I mentioned it. He's, oh, he's okay. Let me. I'm sorry. I'm, lo I'm looking. I'm sorry. I'm looking at, at the previous one. May May I suggest instead of using the word pass legislation, change it to enact legislation. Act. And then, and then put the county executive behind it because then he has to sign it. He doesn't enact; he just signs right. it. Not just signs it. He, they enact, and he signs. Adopt. They, they can't enact. Adopt. Signs. I think I, I thought that was fine. They can't enact unless he signs. He's part of the process. Right. He doesn't get enacted unless he signs. Right. They adopt, and he signs. I guess. So we could say to adopt and enact respectively. It, it, it's fine the way it is. I I have just one more suggestion that before we talk about the village of Amerinic board that we just say board of trustees. So we're not ever confused as to planning board or zoning board, just board of trustees. Yeah, outside of the Outside of this resolution, I have a question that occurred to me today. Maybe Janet or Gerandi can answer this. Uh, the, the, the legislation and the budget that New York State just passed with the $2.1 billion uh, to help folks who weren't helped uh, by uh, the pandemic legislation that's been passed federally. Well, I, I noticed won't erase the problem, but will this help mitigate some of the problem with? Uh, Evictions? Um, thank you for asking that question, Mayor. Well, I think that it does, but very little because we know that there are many um, uh, families who have been behind the rents for months. And most of that rent, um, it is around above $10,000 based on you know the type of families they have and also the number of months that they have been in arrears. Let's just you know uh, remind ourselves that we have been with moratoriums in place for almost a year. So those are, I mean, that are 12 months. And one thing that we know is that um, receiving those funds will also uh, require to meet a certain, um, a certain criteria. Now that the $2.1 billion have been uh, passed in the uh, New York budget, you know, it will require now to create the program and implement it, but not all the families are going to be able to receive those funds because of that they have to prove um, loss of employment and also that they have been impacted by the pandemic or one of our, or of the breadwinner of the family have been lost to COVID. I mean, you know that undocumented um, Im uh, immigrants don't really have uh, records in terms of their employment. So we are working around the implementation process to ask the legislature to really reconsider some of the requirements um, for to access this fund. So uh, we are in the process of that. Um, we assume that 20,000 undocumented workers living in the county 
you know, would access that fund. But because we know that the, lim the limitations and how, you know, hard will be to advocate around those uh, requirements, you know, will be that, you know, we can guarantee that all of those families will have access to that fund. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And if I could just add, I'm sorry I stepped in late um, and I'm not sure if, if Roker was introduced and why we're working together. Can I, can I do that? Yeah, you do whatever you want. Um, so thank you all for, for looking and considering at this resolution. Um, as Janet's talking about the $2.1 billion fund that was just um, you know, one, it's a victory, obviously, for our communities. Um, but we've been working with this very special group of leaders um, through OCRA and the high school for over a year now. Um, as, as we looked at the housing crisis, especially after the COVID-19 uh, crisis and epidemic and pandemic, um, and how we could tackle the issue through a, an emergency assistance fund, which is what the CRC is doing, um, but also advocacy. Um, and that's where this right to counsel piece comes in, um, as well as the, the $2.1 billion fund. It, it's, it's all um, just looking at different, at, at this housing issue and tackling it um, in different perspectives. So we really thank these um, amazing leaders for all of their research that they did, um, petition signing, talking with local legislators, and obviously um, doing this presentation to you. Uh, and so while, while they were doing that advocacy perspective, we were also looking at an emergency fund distribution to help local constituents and residents um, in Mamaroneck and the village of Mamaroneck. So um, I just wanted to, to give them a shout out. Um, and thank you for considering this. No, it, 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 it's good to remember that uh, the folks who are affected by this are our residents. Uh, they are our, our friends. They are our children's classmates. Uh, it affects everybody. And uh, you know, we look out for each other as a community. All of our residents, uh, everybody matters the same. So uh, we want to help those who need help. Uh, who, in a lot of ways, a lot of folks uh, who are undocumented carried us all through this pandemic because they had to go to work every day, and they had to do the hard jobs, and they had to make the deliveries, and uh, you know, so we, we depended upon them uh, when uh, you know, we were all safe and in our homes. So I think that this is only fair play. So thank you for bringing it forward. Anything else we need to know about this before we bring it up tonight? Um, we make a presentation. Uh, Mayor, just to you know, add in terms of undocumented, the right to cancel is more around low-income families who right. don't have the, the financial means to retain an attorney when they're going through eviction proceedings. This goes beyond um, immigrant you know, undocumented or documented. This is mostly for all income families in uh, Westchester County that could uh, have access to legal representation if that is being appointed by the county. Thank you, Jen. That's, that's a very important clarification. Um, so you're gonna make a presentation at the uh, Village of Mamaroneck uh, regular meeting at 7.30. Uh, after your presentation, we will go out of order and we will add this resolution that you're going to send us uh, that we just wordsmith here uh, so that we can add it to the agenda and then the village board of trustees will vote on it right at that point. Does that work for everybody? Sounds yes. great. Thank you so much. Anything, Anything? Can you please send that when you get a chance, my friend? Absolutely. Yeah, I can email right after this. Okay. Uh, it's 7 05. Sure. I've been here since 3 30. Uh, I, I would ask that we adjourn and we meet back at 7 30 okay. uh, to have our regular board of trustees meet. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 All right, I'll be back here at 730. And you know, the, the original uh folks, please be back here too. Thank you.
You, you can stay here. You can stay here. Just stay here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just turn See off the cameras and mute yourselves. But you, great job, everyone. Thank you. Very good job. Thank you all very much. And thank you, Victor, for bringing this forward. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Mute us all.
from? Video. Let's get some stuff in the worst. Let me just cut it back up. Ready? What's happening? <sighs> Broadcasting. We're live right now. Okay. Good evening and welcome to the <clears throat> pardon me, April 12th, 2021, Board of Trustees in the Village of Mamaric regular meetings. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. Aye. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you. I uh, need a motion to open this meeting. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. First item on the agenda is a presentation tonight. And the presentation uh, is from the original Civics Research Action Group, and it's about the Westchester Right to Counsel uh, request. And I will turn it over to my friends, my high school friends. Uh, who wants to lead time? Ms. McDonald, are you going to start? I can get us started. and. I will be screen sharing the presentation as well. Uh, so I'll do reintroductions tonight. So I'm Frances McDowell and I'm here with my group members, Todd, Anna, and Allison tonight. And we are from Maranek High School's Original Civics Research and Action Program. It's a program at our high school where we research the town and municipality, the tri-municipality of Larchmont, Maranek. And we have focused specifically on eviction prevention. And we have been working on advocacy with the Westchester Right Council Coalition and the CRC to move for legislation for a right to counsel in Westchester County. I think that the CRC can introduce themselves as well now. 
Thank you, Francis, uh, and thank you to the Board of Trustees for having us all in this meeting. Uh, I'm Girandi Martinez, Executive Director of the Community Resource Center, and I'm here with my Deputy Executive Director, Janet Rolon Fry, um, very ex and also our board member, Nina Resio Cuddy, um, who is um, attending and supporting us as we have worked over a year with the Ochre students on the housing crisis crisis and how we can tackle it through advocacy as well as an emergency assistance fund for community members that find themselves in need after the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so I thank you for your time um, and for these young leaders who are very involved in their community, have done research, legislative visits, petitions, um, and uh, put together uh, this presentation for you tonight. Thank you. And now we are ready to move on. I will screen share our presentation. I'll, I guess, get started here. Um, I guess, are we, should we introduce ourselves as we all pop on and say our different stuff? Does that sound good? Fantastic. Um, so my name is Caitlin. Um, we're all juniors, so I don't need to say that. Um, but yeah, so happy to be here. Um, so the Right to Counsel uh, Westchester Coalition, we just wanted to start, um, preface this with saying that we're not alone in this action, um, and we are a part of a coalition um, of housing organizations from across Westchester County, which I believe we touched on before, um, who are fighting for the same thing, which is a guarantee of um, legal representation to tenants facing eviction, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, and our priority, uh, this entire coalition, is getting uh, the County Board of Legislators and the County Executive um, to pass right to counsel legislation. Um, and we have had some success in this in the past few months. Um, late last year, we had um, uh, successfully gotten a uh, portion of the county budget dedicated to a cost benefit uh, analysis study for right to counsel in Westchester County. So that's doing exactly what it says it does in the name, which is determining um, the feasibility of right to counsel within Westchester, um, and then also some of the financial aspects of that. Hello, I am Todd Freifeld. So when our group learned about the issue of tenants lacking legal services in our community, we were immediately interested we were told in our first year by a, Mar by a Maranek judge that in civil court, he often sees eviction cases where the landlord brings in an, an attorney and the tenant brings a baby. And tenants in Maranek and across Westchester are severely underrepresented and the right to counsel aims to fix this. And for those of you who are not clear on what the right to counsel is. The right to counsel is the guarantee of free legal representation and advice for those who are facing eviction, similar to how legal counsel is automatically provided for criminal cases. I'm back here. Um, uh, so currently the situation within Westchester County. So you may be wondering to yourself, well, I've heard of something called legal services of, of the Hudson Valley. Don't they provide representation to tenants? And the answer is yes, they do. So there are two existing organizations right now within the county um, that provide uh, legal representation to tenants facing eviction. However, they simply do not have the capacity to deal with uh, the extent of this issue. So I think across those two organizations, there are a total of 10 attorneys, um, which is certainly not enough um, to deal with the thousands of renters, which we'll get into later, um, who are currently at risk of eviction, I mean, even before the pandemic. Um, just to go into a little bit more detail here, Legal Services of the Hudson Valley um, is the 
is the larger of the two organizations. Um, it doesn't, they don't serve undocumented families though. Um, and they do have uh, a lot of intake requirements in order to qualify for their services. Um, so you have to be below 200% of the federal poverty line, which already excludes a lot of families who um, are not in that level of poverty, but are still facing a lot of, um, are still facing eviction. Um, and then there are other qualifications. And so it is hard to get uh, representation from them even though they are fully booked and doing everything they can to expand that. Um, Hudson Valley Justice Center is the second organization that currently provides, um, that currently provides representation for tenants um, and they serve primarily the undocumented um, community. And again, they have very little capacity, even less than legal services. Um, so there really isn't enough support as there is, even though it does exist um, within Westchester County for tenants and eviction proceedings. Um, hi, my name is Allison Hecht, and I'm going to be discussing a little bit why the right to counsel is so important. Um, first of all, housing is a human right, and as such, the right to safe and affordable housing needs to be protected. Uh, we guarantee a right to counsel to criminal defendants, and recognizing that housing is a fundamental human right, then that follows that tenants at risk of eviction should also have the right to counsel. Currently in Westchester, about 93% of landlords have attorneys in eviction cases, while only 7% of tenants do. This creates a power imbalance in the courtroom. Eviction judgments are made on average in just four minutes, and in some courts in Westchester, the average time a case is heard for can be as little as two minutes. When tenants don't have legal representation, they can be evicted on false premises of lease violations they didn't commit, or excess rent that they do not actually owe. Additionally, settlements in eviction cases can sometimes happen outside the courtroom, as a landlord's attorney will try to take advantage of a tenant and reach a settlement with them in the hallway outside the courtroom. There can also be a language barrier in court for some tenants. When tenants don't have representation, they aren't always aware of all their rights, and they can feel more powerless to speak up for themselves, even when they are being taken advantage of by their landlord or their landlord's attorney. So this current power imbalance in courtrooms is putting more people into the homelessness system and jeopardizing families. When we do guarantee the right to counsel to tenants in need, we make the process of eviction cases much more fair and equitable. And what Francis is going to go into next is that this housing and eviction crisis has always existed and been a serious issue, but the pandemic has only further exacerbated the situation, making the need for a right to counsel more pressing than ever. Yes, so as Allison just alluded to, the COVID-19 pandemic has worsened an already dire state of evictions uh, for many tenants across the country and in our county. Uh, this pandemic has now spanned over a year, and in the village of Mamaroneck alone, there is a total of $215,000 owed by the 81 households who reached out to the CRC. And this may be only a fraction of the households that are at risk of eviction in the village. We have also seen 31,557,000 dollars individuals in Westchester at risk of eviction. And while COVID-19 has enhanced the need of families facing eviction, the eviction crisis will not end once this pandemic is subdued, which highlights the fact that we only have 10 attorneys prepared to address said crisis. Uh, and that's why such an enduring issue needs a lasting solution like right to counsel. And additionally, there is definitely precedent for this precedent for this coalition. In 2017, New York passed the right to counsel legislation, which planned to phase the right to counsel in over five years. Since this legislation was passed, New York City has seen an 80% reduction in the in evictions. And of those who have been represented, 84% won their cases through either a reduction in the amount owed or they got to stay in their homes. New York City also increased the amount of attorneys employed from 200 to 600. The city estimates that, that it will save about 251 million total after 
the right to counsel is fully phased in. As of now, with the pandemic, the coalition is pushing for an immediate implementation of the right to counsel instead of continuing to phase it in through 2022. Monroe County also approved of the right to counsel program in June of last year, showing how it is picking up steam across the state. So I think here we're just going to go into um, this is a little summary slide for your convenience. But then um, the next couple just go through the resolution. We have um, the text. We don't have the updated text of the resolution on these slides actually, so that is bad on our part. Um, however, it's okay. Um, I'm also happy to just screen share again uh, the text of the slides if that's easier, Francis. Would that be better? Yeah, I will stop sharing and have you pick up from here. Amazing. Okay, and we did this a little bit earlier in the work session just for context, um, but figured why not do it again. Um, look at our resolution here. Is this screen sharing properly? Yes. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so this looks pretty familiar, edited 49 minutes ago, um, but we'll just walk through it again. Uh, a little bigger, please, Katie. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go, excellent. Fantastic. Um, so here's the resolution just in our preamble, whereas is here, um, we kind of go through a lot of the data that we just went through with that presentation um, and we cite it as we should. Um, and yeah, I, I'll do a slow scroll through here. Again, this is just setting the scene, talking about how in COVID-19 um, COVID times, um, there's been a lot of people have fallen behind on rents and um, there is an even greater need for right to counsel than ever before. Um, yeah, this is quite a staggering number here. 93% of landlords are represented in court in Westchester. Only 7% of tenants are kind of crazy. Um, yeah, and then getting down to our super important part of this resolution, which is the resolves. Um, what we are resolving, what we are proposing that the board resolves to do um, is encouraging the Westchester County Board of Legislators as well as County Executive George Latimer to take steps to understand and address the impact of eviction proceedings on uh, their community. This should be changed to a singular. This is why we read through things. Um, and then also um, encouraging them to pass and enact uh, legislation within the county that addresses right to counsel directly. Yeah, are there any, I think that kind of reaches the conclusion of our little presentation here. Uh, we had a conclusion slide, but alas, we're not using it because we're not on the slides anymore. Um, I'll keep the resolution up here for a sec if people still wanna read through it. But um, having said that, are there any questions? I, I think, as I stated before, I think it's a, a very worthy endeavor. Uh, I think that uh, this is something that uh, is, is a crisis that we're gonna be facing. And I'm glad you folks and the uh, uh, Community Resource Center have gotten out in front of it and hopefully uh, the Westchester County folks will stay in front of it too. But uh, thank you for doing this. Any questions from the board? <clears throat> okay, so what? Can I say just one? Um, so Caitlin made an edit, and I think it's the first re the first resolved. Um, how about? impact of eviction proceedings on Westchester communities. Because you want them to look at all the Westchester. I think you were right with communities. Thanks. Thank you, Caitlin. No problem. Technology, we can do it immediately. Yeah, well, you can. <laughs> I, this is new for us. <laughs> you guys did a great job. Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions for the from the CRC. Thank you all. I just want I was going to offer a comment uh, on how well researched um, the the project is and that's why all those whereas clauses you know have that footnote I think that's that's pretty amazing. The CRC has been working on housing uh, for, for from ever right and but but also encouraging studies there was the right next study done with with the other high school. So when, when I see this coming uh, 
from, from this students. And I ask, actually have a special guest with me, my daughter who's in ninth grade uh, and she's um, you know, listening to see the kind of work you can do there. So um, thank you for bringing this and, and the level of work you've done. She's peeking, Victor, have her, yeah. have her fully appear. Uh -huh. That's Hi. my guest, my special guest here. <laughs> um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go out of order. We, we're going to right. edit an item to the agenda right now. Okay. And that item will be uh, this resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, can I have a motion adding the item to the agenda? So moved. Uh, Second. Or and Kelly, or team no. Call the roll, Bogey. Trustee Zwentrup? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Caitlin, can you do me a favor again? Can you put the resolution up? I'm going to read it into the record. Yes, absolutely. Whereas the COVID-19 pandemic has cast a bright light on housing courts and access to justice. Whereas the village of Americ is committed to increasing access to the legal counsel for low and self-represented litigants. Whereas the unprecedented health and economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and compounding and intensifying the legal needs of low-income ind individuals, including that one, as many as 31,557 renter households in Westchester County 23.7% of the total could be facing eviction in the next months, stressing nonprofits, municipal services, and created a human and public health crisis. Two, the village of Mamaroneck, 758 renter households could be facing, in the village of Mamaroneck, 758 renter households could be facing eviction in the next few months. Three, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, Westchester had some of the highest eviction rates in the state, and whereas pandemic-driven evictions or, the, or at the village of Mamaroneck's doorstep, even with the COVID-19 Emergency and Eviction and Foreclosure Preventing Act of 2020. Whereas the plight of renters facing eviction is disrupted, destabilizing, and can have a long-term personal and financial negative consequences to their families and the community at large. Whereas an eviction, once entered, affects a tenant's credit and impacts the ability to obtain safe and healthy housing in the future without a, per, a, a process to seek or expunge the prior eviction. Whereas residents do not have a right to counsel in civil proceedings, such as an eviction proceeding. Whereas Mamaric families facing evictions may not have legal representation. Whereas 93% of landlords are represented in court in Westchester, while only 7% of tenants are represented in New York City. Tenants were found to win 80% of the time once represented. Whereas, therefore, an imbalance in knowledge and legal process places Mamaroneck families facing the loss of their homes at a significant disadvantage. Whereas landlords who evict tenants face court costs, potential attorney's fees, long and short-term vacancies, relenting costs, and potential loss of rental arrears when tenants are evicted. Whereas currently state, county, municipal, and private sources, private source funds are available to landlords on behalf of tenants to pay late or even future rent for purposes for persons impacted by COVID-19. Whereas there is a precedent for providing legal services to tenants in New York State, as seen in New York City with Interroad 214 and in Monroe County. Therefore, the Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees resolves as follows. Resolves that the Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees encourages the Westchester County Board of Legislatures and the county executives to take steps to understand and to address the impact of, evict of eviction proceedings on Westchester communities. Resolved that the Village of Mamaroneck Board of Trustees encourages the Westchester County Board of Legislators and the county executives to enact legislation guaranteeing Westchester tenants the right to counsel in eviction proceedings across Westchester. Very nicely worded. I will make that motion. Second. Second. Trustees Weintrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes. And thank you to uh, the high schoolers, the CRC, and to Trustee Tafour for bringing this forward. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anything else we can do in the future, please let us know. 
Thank you very much for your time. Have our address. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have the good work. Thank you so Thank much. Nina, it's good seeing you. <laughs> it's nice to see everybody. They, these are, are remarkable students, really. They're Unbelievable. Really it's phenomenal to watch them. The really. The brightest. Yeah, we're lucky. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. Next item on the agenda is communication to the board. Uh, the ticket has his hand up. Good evening, board members. Um, first thing, um, I've mentioned this before. Um, the um, village uh, rules and regulations on restaurants, uh, especially when it comes to uh, food establishments, curbside service. Currently, unless you are a sit down restaurant that serves at tables, you are not allowed to offer curbside service to your customers. I think that this has to be, um, this law has to be looked at. I think uh, new restaurants coming in, part of their model is curbside service. We just went through that with um, Chop Salad, which is trying to come into the village. And I just don't understand why we even have a law against curbside service. McDonald's, which has adequate parking spaces at one time offered the curbside service, and it actually alleviates cars being in the street over at McDonald's because they would have the larger orders go over to the four or five spots that they dedicated. I, I don't I don't understand the down downside of it for uh, restaurants that have their own parking lots. You can allow them to have up to two parking spaces for curbside service for every 10 spots. If you have 20 spots, you want four spots for curbside service. That's fine. But I don't see why we need to differentiate between any food establishment at this point with apps and cell phones and everything else and online ordering that uh, a majority of the public likes the fact that they can pull up and have their food brought out to them. On the avenue, you uh, have even discussed it, having uh, some dedicated curbside um, spaces put on the avenue. So it's something that you definitely have to address. And I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure the Board of Appeals is going to be sending you a letter to address that. Um, it's, 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 it's time to uh, straighten out that whole food establishment issue. I know it's been pushed back. Uh, are you going to actually discuss the um, budget tonight as part of your meeting? Proposed budget? Or I didn't hear. Is that yes or no? I can't hear Tom. Can somebody else answer? There's a public hearing right next on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, just a couple other things. Uh, number one, we're uh, at 25% of uh, people have gotten two shots. 40% have gotten one shot. The next 50 to 60 days are crucial. Um, we will get to about 60% of the population at that point. Um, there is some resistance out there to getting the vaccines. It is imperative that we push to try to get to that 80%. You're, get, you're probably going to get to about 60% and around June 1st. And at that point, there has to be a great effort made to get that that extra for 20% because you're not going to hit herd immunity 
if you're at 60 70 percent so we need to outreach to every single uh, uh community you know uh we have to uh make sure that all the un unserved community uh um residents in this community have access they know they have access they know they have free access and to really uh address that and i will speak about the budget when we bring that up thank you Mr. Kent, you're on. Good evening, uh, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I live by the beach at the end of Bleecker Avenue, and Mr. Barbario was kind enough to brief me recently on the facts regarding the beach, which has been marked with a village sign that says kayak launching only. Um, Mr. Barbario told me he is determined that the beach is private and that he will have the kayak launching sign removed. However, um, even when the sign is removed, I have no doubt that many people will continue to think that it is a public beach, perhaps now open for swimming as well as kayaking. And that'll create an even more dangerous situation at the beach, which is only a few feet from a busy boat corridor. Last year, people often swam right across the boat channel to reach a small island we have here. And the Harbor Police, I'm sure, will confirm that they were forced to respond frequently to stop unauthorized swimming and keep the boat channel clear. Uh, there's also a jetty adjoining the beach that completely blocks both swimmers and kayakers from seeing vessels coming until the last minute, and that makes the situation even more hazardous. And in addition, the beach is being used to set off fireworks and as a route to climb onto private property, including the jetty and neighboring docks. If the village now does indeed consider the beach to be private, I think I understood uh, correctly what Mr. Uh, Barbiero said, uh, I believe it's essential to make clear that this is the case, uh, specifically uh, by the village posting a new sign immediately to address the public beach impression that the current signage has created. And this new sign would say it is closed to public use. Uh, the best resolution would be to fence off the beach to eliminate all danger to citizens and property and also potential liability for the village when an accident inevitably occurs. Um, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, Mr. Kent. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me again. Uh, go to Mr. Spatz. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Board of Trustees. I um, just wanna make sure you can hear me because I can't, uh, I don't think you can see me, but hopefully I'm being heard. Yes. Yep. Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to see everyone um, and everyone safe and sound. I have two particular issues uh, that I want to just bring to the attention this evening, and I wish I could only see you all in person, but uh, for now we'll have to settle for Zoom. Um, as many of you know, uh, I have a practice in land use and zoning, and over the course of the last few years, I've had the pleasure of appearing before our great land use boards and committees and uh, bringing with many great uh, applicants that have really provided the vitality and lifeblood of our community, um, including even our own residents who've invested in our community. But I'm greatly, greatly troubled over the course of the last year or so where we stand with regards to applications, the process, and where we go from here. We deserve better. Um, it is, we, we're 17 miles from the greatest city in the world and the process is absolutely, in some regard, in disarray. And I think first and foremost, I want to compliment though, was as concerned as I am, this is not just about criticism or constructive advice, it's also about what we're doing right. I think we we'll have the ability to go in the right direction with our village planner, Amber, and our councils um, from Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah, 
at LP. I was greatly concerned that we were taking on a firm from Albany to handle local affairs, but they've proven to have sufficient and absolutely good knowledge of the ins and outs of our code, which is completely antiquated um, and in depth. Also our building department and the entire village planning office, including Barbara, have really done what they can to try to work with what we had left once Greg Cutler and Benny Ann left. This past summer, as many of you know, was a disaster, but we have now working our way back towards being in a better place. I implore the board of trustees to provide um, Whiteman, Osterman, and Hannah, Amber, Frank, Barbara, whomever else with the recommendations to support the re recommendations that they may have to better facilitate the application process. Perhaps this could be in pre-application meetings to vet the actual applications to avoid surprises. Timely filing of comments by consultants. It's pretty embarrassing, Mayor, and members of the board to be an attorney on behalf of applicants to receive comments from consultants that we're paying, you hire, I pay for as a taxpayer, and get comments during the course of the actual meetings. We deserve better. We absolutely can do better. I know we can. And I think that we have to hold individuals responsible, especially some of the consultants. Um, possible needs for a business. If you're a brand new business, that simply is trying to just change the use of a previous entity without any construction, why should we have to go to three different boards, planning, ZBA, and possibly HZZM? If I'm a small individual who's trying to create a business here in our amazing community, that is antiquated. It's wrong. It's discouraging people. You might as well go up north to Harrison or go south to Larchmont because it's not happening there, but it's happening in our backyard. We have to do something to assist these individuals. I'm not talking about big projects that require serious environmental studies and, and which could seriously impact, obviously, the livelihood and lifestyle and quality of life of our neighbors. But these are simple applications of a mere business trying to open up. I'm not speaking on behalf of any particular client. I'm simply reiterating the concerns I have as someone who has family here in the community. I can't go to a little league soccer baseball game without someone coming up to me and saying, what can we do? Why is this happening? My answer to them is, you know what? Communicate your concerns to the board because the board are the individuals who actually appoint the individuals to the various land use boards and committees as well as retain the various consulting firms. Um, I think that, as I said, the communication, I'm more than happy to assist the village to facilitate the policies that are changing. They're changing, hopefully for the better, but allow me, allow people to assist to get the information out because you don't know what you don't know. Knowledge is truly power. It's, it's knowledge it will help the ability for applicants to govern the, the, the applicant's expectations that we can better facilitate the process. Um, Andrew? Yes, Mayor. I'm sorry to interrupt you. We have a five minute limit. You've gone over a little bit, but I understand where you're coming from. And uh, I, I think that you've made cogent points and I appreciate what you've said here tonight. Thank you, Mayor and members of the board. And if I could just, if I can't get five, 10 seconds to end on a positive note, again, I think that your staff, Mayor and members of the board are outstanding. They have a, her, a, a tremendous challenge. These are challenging Thank times, Mayor you. and members of the, of the board. I appreciate that. Thank you very so much. So please give them the support that, that you, you can. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, go to Mr. Kevin Duarte Chung. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking me. Just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. I'm using a pair of microphones here, so I want to make sure I can be heard. Does everyone hear me all right? You can be heard. Go Hello? ahead. Go so ahead. you hear me all right? You can be heard. Maybe you can't hear us. 
Okay, great. Um, so I don't really have a question for you tonight. Uh, it's just more of a comment that I would like to make for your consideration. I was recently going over the release budget proposal for 2022. And on page 20, I noticed that our projected legal spending is to be at slightly more than half a million dollars. And the comment tonight is that this amount of money is downright absurd, I think. I don't think that we should be spending this much money, um, especially when we have, we actually just had the conversation about, the wonderful conversation about how people are struggling with eviction proceedings and legal representation. And with $550,000, $550,000, you could have paid literally every single one of those persons rents for a year, I'm pretty sure, and still have some left over to spend on food for budget meetings and other items. So my comment uh, tonight was also digging a little bit as you request, as you suggested to me last time, Mr. Mayor, you told me that I should try to get in touch with some of the individuals. Uh, we're trying to do this development, these kinds of development projects in Mamaronic that are resulting in the legal costs going up and to try to understand why they are in fact attacking us and we we'll um, so I've gone ahead and done that, and what I've actually discovered is that negotiation was not something that was on the table. It was something that was completely ignored. Uh, as far as I can understand, it seems that multiple requests from multiple parties to sort of negotiate before you go to court were either denied or just blocked off by the village and ended up in the courtroom anyway. So I did a little bit more digging after that, and I discovered a 2006 document that was created by three, I believe, Oriental residents who I believe are attorneys, uh, where they outlined in 2006, they outlined a lot of different recommendations for the village, um, including to hire a village attorney in order to lower and other. I'm not sure how that is being handled. I'm not sure how that's being working. And of course I won't ask at this point because I don't really need an answer. Uh, I just wanted to make the comment that I think we do need to make a change in the way that we handle our business. We do need to make a change in the way that we approach litigation um, and in, in legal situations specifically. I think we all understand that we need to defend ourselves when the time comes, that is definitely true. But I think it's also true that you shouldn't go looking for a fight when it is something avoidable altogether. And something I, and I to end, I don't wanna go over my time limit, just to end my comment. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that the one thing that kept coming up as I had these conversations with these developers and with these third parties, as you suggested, something that kept coming up was the idea that when you go to court, everyone loses, you know, someone might've won the case, but you know, to get there, you had to spend money and time and effort and make sacrifices along the way. So the moment that you go to court, everyone loses and nobody truly, truly wins because the courtroom is not really designed for that. And it seems to me that there's no, it just doesn't seem to me that there has been an adequate effort on behalf of the board to avoid this kind of, to avoid, to avoid this kind of costs. Um, so that's where I want to end tonight. I hope that you could take these recommendations and hopefully over time, perhaps by next year or the year after, we can start to look at lowering these legal costs and figuring out where else we could save money in order to avoid litigation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, go to Richard. Uh, Rich, you got to unmute yourself. Okay, I thought I did. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, great. This is uh, Rich Langerer. Thank you for the mayor, board of trustees, and everybody else on the call tonight. Uh, I am just calling back uh, to provide an update on the outside dining on the streets. Um, the village was happy to allow, or the board, I should say, was given a directive to the village manager to allow them to pay for the same uh, amount of space that they received last year due to the COVID-19 restrictions. And a comment that was made um, basically said, well, we have something that they want and we charge for it. And all I would ask is for all the village trustees to go out and look at the main street on the, on the avenue and ask me how many restaurants have those barriers in front. And the answer is one. And the reason why there's only one barrier out there for a restaurant is because they seem to be the only ones who can afford close to $10,000 for those parking spots. I find it as the president of the Chamber of Commerce absolutely ridiculous that 
the village is trying to make money off the backs of restaurants who have been struggling for the last year. And you guys have the audacity to continue to let these restaurants struggle. In a year from now, you're going to have an empty village. You're not going to have anybody who's going to want to come here to open up a shop. Number one, because of the fact that you guys have to have some money coming in from these parking spots. Give them a discount. Lower the fee. You have to have these restaurants stay in business for this village to be vibrant. In addition to that, what the other attorney had just said is you guys don't want to work with building with a with restaurant owners or with any businesses, all I hear is complaints that they go to one board, they, they get denied for something, said you have to go here. They go to another place, they say, no, you have to go to this place. Where's the flow chart? Where's the ease of doing business? Where's the friendly village of Mamaroneck? And why are you guys insisting upon getting $10,000 for eight months of, of taking up some parking space? I just find it very irresponsible of you guys to even consider asking that much money. We asked for a break on our last, on our last call or your last meeting. And I was basically told it was denied. None of you board members, I don't think have ever worked in a restaurant or ever owned one to know how much, how many tables you have to sit to make back $10,000. It's a lot of money. And you're going to see a lot of these restaurants go on out of business. Uh, and that's all I have to say. And I hope you guys rethink this, offer a discount, offer something to the businesses, because next year you're going to have a lot of empty shops if nothing is done. And thank you for your time. And I hope uh, you guys change your mind. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Uh, next up, Daria. Hello there. Um, you can hear me? Yes. I feel like a, a broken record asking that after everyone else just asked that. Um, so I wanted to speak up today. Um, it's been it's been a little bit since I called in, um, but I wanted to address um, the last time I spoke how the mayor cut me off a few weeks ago because I don't live in the village. And I just wanted to take a moment to state that I am in the school district and I shop, eat, and frequent the village more than I do Larchmont. And as shown by the fact that I listen into these meetings and speak with my neighbors about local issues, I do care about taxes and spending and it affects the whole area. In addition, under the open meetings law, any person can speak for five minutes regardless of their race, religion, gender, and yes, where they live. Last time I spoke up, Ms. Winstrup sarcastically told me I was in the wrong meeting. Additionally, the questions that I'm asking you are those that your own residents want to hear the answers of. I just, why else would I, why else would I ask them? And I asked you guys this um, a couple weeks ago and I didn't get an answer. I just wanted to ask, why it is okay for the mayor and Ms. Winstrup to take campaign money from people outside the village and outside the state. As far as California, I saw, but I can't make a point without being sarcastically humiliated by the two of you. Ms. Daria, no one stopped you from speaking. I just did not answer your questions. I was interrupted. Um, several times and told that I didn't have a place in this meeting. That, that is a misrepresentation. I'm sorry, but it is. No one stopped you from speaking. No one can stop you from getting your points across. Uh, I'm just not going to be party anymore to these attempts by Hampshire to get us to say things that they're going to use in litigation against us. And I believe you're a conduit for that. And I'm sorry you're being used that way. But that really is how I view this these days. Uh, I've, seen things, I've seen things I've said uh, to you and to Mr. Duarte uh, on that Facebook page that Hampshire is uh, making believe it's like a grassroots page, but it's really Hampshire doing it. So, you know, I, 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 I'm sorry if you feel uh, insulted. I didn't mean that. But the truth of the matter is, I feel like this is Hampshire trying to manipulate the Board of Trustees and the public when all we're doing is defending the boards and commissions of this community 
who have worked hard and made a decision. So I'm sorry if you felt insulted and that's on me if that happened. Yeah, so thank you for responding in that way. Um, I, I just want to state again that this is a group that's created with um, Kevin and I, and we are working to really try to implement change that we care about in this village. And yes, we've shared Hampshire um, links on our page, but it's because they have valid points. And we've also shared village resources on our page. Um, and I look forward to continuing this discussion with you in, in further meetings and asking questions that I and other people in this village want to hear the answers of. That's all. So I hope you guys have a nice night. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay, there was a Susan that had her hand up. Susan, did you want to say something? Okay, Susan put her hand back down. Let's back up. Uh, grab Susan there. Yeah. I just want to say amen to that man who just spoke about the restaurants and the outrageous fees. I've been hearing stories from residents in the neighbor in the village about what you're doing to the restaurants in our avenue. And I really have to say this board really needs to rethink why they are on the board and why you keep running again when things are so dysfunctional in this village. Thank you. Well, there's, 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 always, there's always an opportunity for folks to run against us. Uh, and and uh, that, that, that's called democracy. Uh, that being said, thank you for communication to the board. Next up is uh, public hearing. Uh, first is public hearing on the 2021-2022 tentative budget. requires that we keep this open until we vote on the budget. Uh, we don't have anything in front of us. I need, I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. What we call roll. Trustee Winship? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Anybody on the board have any questions, comments, or concerns? Mr. Teeker has his hand up. Hi, good evening. Um, just a procedural point, didn't you adjourn the public hearing to this meeting? Or do you close it at each meeting and then reopen it? We adjourn it to another time. Okay. Um, I have a couple questions, Paige. Um, I assume we're on the 318 Preparation report, is that correct? For 1821? We don't have it in front of us. Oh, okay. Um, so what I have for 31821 is um, on page 145, it's stormwater management. Um, and there is a line for contract services for catch base and cleaning. I thought we were doing, doing that all in house now. Am I wrong? Dan, Dan, I... Dan, can you answer that question? Yeah, I think we propose to have money in the budget in case we want to or need to supplement what we can do in-house with an outside contractor. Well, that's certainly not the promise of the buying the backdrop. Um, I mean, whatever, but okay. The next item under that is river and channel cleaning for $23,200. Do we still do that? 
Dan? Uh, we do that. We've been looking at some areas where we've seen some accumulation and uh, may want to bring in a contractor to help maintain areas in the village. When was the last time we cleaned our rivers or channels? I, I, I don't know the exact year and I, I don't want to make it up, but it was it's about a within... decade. It's about a decade ago now. It was the early yeah. rose and bloom years and then they abandoned. I, I think we did something recall. more recent than that, but I really, I, yeah, I don't, okay. I don't have the exact answer though. Okay. I'll ask for that for foil, I guess. Um, page well and let me just say so those are two items that i think we haven't spent on in the last two years it's almost thirty thousand dollars it is thirty thousand dollars so that's a big chunk um page 87 insect control under seasonal labor there's $10,000 for a pesticide applicator. Is that for the guy who throws the larvicide into the pools in Otter Creek? Dan, can you give an answer to that? Uh, it's for an employee uh, of the village who has an applicator's license and he uh, does the work for us. So and we pay him from records I've seen a thousand dollars an hour. Right. Mosquito season is a five-month season. As I understand the process, is after the high tides, the pools are treated. It's not a lot of time to do that. So I think there's some money to be saved there. Um, the next line down under contract contractual expenses supplies. Um, there is a line for village catch basin larvicide applications, $8,000. Is that just for, um, the dunks to put in the catch basins or does that include labor or something? Dan? Yeah, I believe that that's for the uh, actual, uh, tablets, the, uh, uh, for many years, Westchester County uh, ran a program where they uh, put the larvicide tablets in the catch basins. They stopped that program maybe three or four years ago, and uh, we were we've been continuing that program for the benefit of the residents. I understand that. Um, I can go to the hardware store and buy a half a dozen dunks for under $10. We have approximately a thousand catch basins in the village. This is $8 a catch basin. Seems excessive if we're buying in quantity. So there might be some money to be saved there. Um, age tw 12, under village manager, contractual expenses. There's another $36,000 in for the grant writer. As I recall, last time you approved the contract for the grant writer, there was going to be an evaluation of how beneficial this was for residents. Um, we pay $36,000 a year. Last time I looked, we would gotten very few grants for that. We had a lot out there. I don't know if any of those have come in, but will the board consider Saving that thirty-six thousand this year. Will anybody, you know, I mean, evaluate that? That seems like easy money. If we're spending, you know, you're paying six thousand dollars this month, this um, a lot of the bills, and as I said, if we're not getting grants, I'm not sure if it's worth it. Um, so I hope you'll consider that. Um, page 154. I'm sorry. No, I'm done. Thanks. Next up is Glenn.
Everyone. Good evening. Um, just going over the um, tentative budget. Um, <clears throat> number one, there's still $234,000 in the budget for concerts that obviously aren't going to take place. That has to be taken out. Number two, there's $40,000 in revenue for Florence Park uh, tennis fees. I have not seen nor heard this board take up uh, um, having tennis fees at Florence Park, nor have I seen this board schedule any hearings about starting to charge fees for Florence Park for tennis. If the board is looking to do that, they have to get it on the agenda, have a hearing, get it done. If it's not um, part of this uh, board's uh, agenda, then that money has to be taken out of revenues for the budget. Number three, uh, we're renting the pavilion for the keeps program for $25,000. I don't remember seeing a contract um, passed by this board. Um, who, who signed the contract and what are the parameters for that rental? Because we got $25,000 worth of, income, of revenue for the keeps program for the pavilion. What, what's the contract? When do they get it? What hours do they get it? Uh, maintenance, whatever. The and other uh, couple of things in the in the budget are we have beach daily pass revenue of one hundred and fifty three thousand dollars. Our beach capacity is three hundred. We have approximately a hundred days that you can rent the beach. And I still, I believe we're still under a 50% capacity cap. So basically you're looking to sell out the beach virtually every day during the summer in order to reach that revenue number. Well, let, let me ask, da the daily pass is what? $10 for a non-resident? Daily beach pass. And you have those figures? Um, I, I don't have the figures, but I mean, uh, the, these estimates were not, you know, drawn down from the ether. Um, you know, these estimates were based on uh, past years' experience. Uh, as far as the recre recreation fees and charges, <clears throat> I believe the board considered and adopted those towards the end of 2020, so it could be included in the advertised materials that the uh, uh, recreation department. Uh, uh, prepares for the village residents prior to the adoption of the budget. Also, with respect to the $234,000, uh, we cannot make changes to the tentative budget on the fly. The tentative budget is the budget that's prepared by the budget officer. Uh, once the tentative budget is filed, uh, only the village board can make changes to that. And that's typically done as part of the, it's always done as part of the budget adoption. That's why I'm bringing up, uh, bringing that up now that those changes have to be made. Yeah. And as for the uh, daily uh, uh, um, uh, 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 permit sales, last year we had an all-time high of 100,000. You're looking at a uh, increase of 50% in, in one year. I believe there were increases to, in many of the fees. The, the other thing is that if you are planning to have a village attorney you don't have it in the budget. You still don't have budgeted any money for um, senior staff, any raises with senior staff. And because you're under contract, you still don't have any money put in for raises for uh, police officers. Eventually when that contract gets settled, that will have to be placed into the budget you have an extremely tight budget. My suggestion would be 
that if you're going to adapt the budget as is in the second week in October to analyze uh, exactly what did come in in revenue because all your summer revenues would be in by then, which is rec department, park department, um, marine and docks. And then I would uh, see what, what you have mm -hmm. and if you can afford to put a village attorney in there what adjustments that you'd have to be made but um right now you have an extremely aggressive revenue um for your budget and your expenses are as tight as could be and and please this is not a criticism of staff or anybody else they have to make the budget balance with the numbers this is what they were given this is what they have to do at this point, it's it's the trustees that have to make the decision. Are we going to go over the 2% cap? Are we going to go up to the 2% cap? How much money you're comfortable taking out of the general fund in order to make this budget balance this year? If you want to go further in to the uh, general fund in order to fund other things within the budget or make changes that has to be adjusted to. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to say well, we have extremely talented staff including, uh, apparatus and we have extremely talented heads of departments who work very hard both on their revenue projections and on their costs. And all of the numbers in the budget were in consultation with people who knew their jobs. Stuff was left in budgets, uh, you know, like, why don't we remove this? Why don't we remove that? Because we haven't done it this year or that year. Because historically, they've had to spend money on it. And just because they haven't spent it in the past two or three years doesn't mean you remove the line item from the budget. Because that will be the year when you need it. And then you won't have it. So you know, I, I think what, what we should do is after this is all over, uh, the staff should sit down with the budget committee and go a deep dive in how they come up with the numbers and their projections so that they have some, they have some uh, context to see where we are and how we got to where we are in the future. Because I, I think you know, what, what's happening is there isn't a lot of context. And they're looking at a number without knowing the history behind the number. Okay, uh, anybody else on the board have anything to say? Trustee Natchez? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> no, it, there's no question that this is an extremely tight budget. Um, uh, it needs to be pointed out for the record that there is no capital budget numbers that have been put out uh, as part of this hearing. Uh, which is a problem. Um, uh, it's not a question of why, it's a question of we need to do that uh, as part of our budget review uh, and uh, whatever we have finally ended up adopting. I did just uh, get a uh, communication from the chairman of the budget committee who had asked for a few minutes uh, tomorrow night's work session to talk about the budget but it's a hold. Uh, I hope the board will acquiesce to that um, in addition to the comments on whatever else goes on during that meeting. Um, but I think it's important for everybody to know that this is very tight. The um, expenses uh, are going up faster than uh, as a percentage increase than our revenues, which long-term is not a good sign. And it's been happening for you know uh, more than you know uh, this year or this projection year, um, and it's a trend. Um, we, I think, it's important for us to take a hard look at where we're going, um, and understand that. Uh, and I'll use the word deficit spending uh, does not bode well for a long-term approach to life. Um, and that's what we are, are faced with. And I think we have to take a hard look of where we're going to go and what we're going to do uh, and come up with an approach that 
uh, is both prudent and has a longer term plan uh, to solve um, the fiscal pressures that we are under. Um, I, uh, Glenn's comments in that, you know, the expenses uh, in many cases may be understated and the uh, revenues may be in some cases overstated is not totally off base. Uh, uh, I don't think anybody has a crystal ball that can predict exactly what's going to happen. And a budget is to try and put together the best guess as to how to um, meet our needs, uh, keep the quality of life uh, of that, what, that the village uh, desires, um, but at the same time be uh, fiscally prudent. And that, that's what this board has to do over the next few weeks. I, well, we don't have a few weeks. We have to adopt the budget by May 1st. I, I can't hear you, Tom. We have to adopt the budget by May 1st. Uh, I just want to take issue. This board in this community has never had deficit spending. Deficit spending is when you don't have the revenue to meet your expenses. That has never happened. That is a mischaracterization. And I don't believe that we are actually in a terrible financial situation. I think that that is, you know, a a a, 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 a fiction that's been created to drive other issues. Uh, we, we've talked about, you know, for years we've stayed under the cap. Our fund balance has grown and grown and grown. So now we have a thirty-five percent fund balance. You know, these are just facts and it, it's against the law to have deficit spending. And it, it, it's, it's also an insult to past boards and to the staff to say that we have deficit spending because we don't. Trustee DeFore? You want to respond, Ben? No, go, go ahead, Victor, I'll go after you. My, my point is very brief. I, I do uh, agree that we'll review the budget in about four or five months. That is being a recommendation by the controller's office. Uh, budget are a good, uh, the best estimate on what you have. And it's very difficult to do that now, even though we're keeping a, a close eye on, on you know, what the proposals are on the previous years, but things are, are more difficult now. So what, what is suggested is that you, you can review your budget midway and make and make a budget amendments. Uh, the the controller's office is saying that that's that's not. Don't take that as you did your budget wrong. Actually, they are encouraging you to really look at it two or three times a year and make the changes. This this is these are kind of the times when you should do that. So they're trying to kind of um, get it getting us out of of thinking that it's you just have to struggle and get it. Get it, get it once, uh, because it, it is, it is really impossible in this time. So, I, I think we can certainly. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of of revisiting this in in four or five months. I think that that's a good estimate. That's all. Okay, uh, we have a hand up, Daria. Um, hi there. So I wanted to ask um, about the the budget for legal fees. Um, in that, it looks like you've budgeted around five hundred seventy five thousand for legal fees in the 2020-2022 budget. Um, and even just this week's audited bills include eighty nine thousand of legal fees, which which include the 25,000 for Hampshire, 29,000 for 130 Beach Avenue, 11,000 for the Cindy Goldstein litigation. Um, and I just wanted to ask why um, you budgeted 575,000. Um, like, is that enough? Uh, especially since um, the ABC properties decision was just appealed. That was the uh, recommendation of staff. Thank you. Okay. Um, I actually also wanted to ask um, where Mr. Sp uh, Spolzino was because 
I thought his retainer included attending all board of trustees meetings. He is here. Okay. Ah, cool. Thank you. I just, it wasn't showing up on my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Tigert has his hand up. Give him another shot. But please be brief. Yeah, I, um, I will be brief. It is a public hearing though. Um, I just looked up deficit spending, the definition, which um, this is from dictionary. Oh. Um, I can give you the website, but it's government spending in excess of revenue of funds raised by borrowing rather than taxation. So it seems to be pretty broad. I'm not sure the use of deficit spending was incorrect in that case. And I would say that I provided some context for my comments. The $23,000 for river dredging, I believe the records will show that it hasn't been done since the early um, teens, 10 years ago. So I'm, I'm just not sure why there's, you know, it's sitting there and it can be used somewhere else for money that needs to be better spent. That's it. Thank you. And deficit spending is when you have a negative fund balance. Uh, All I did, Mayor, was read the definition yes, from... You, um, you went on the internet. Thank you very much. Trustee Natchez? Term deficit spending means when your revenue, when you're don't have enough to cover your expenses. So in order to balance the budget in the last several years, we have taken money out of the reserves to balance the budget. Um, we've been fortunate that during the operation of the last couple of years, we were able to get more revenue than was anticipated. And therefore we were able to put the money back into the savings account, but the next year we took it out. Uh, that's been being proposed again this year. Uh, and the question is, you know, how much were we going to do that? That's what I call deficit spending because we are, we are not keeping pace with what we need. Our expenses are growing faster than our revenues. And this year has been a very tough year for all of us and for many ways and for the village financially. And staff has been doing a great job of trying to manage. It's not a reflection on any individual. It's not saying that nobody's trying to do the right job. It's just recognizing what the facts actually are and what that could potentially mean as we go forward. And part of our job is not just to worry about this year, but what the trend lines are for the future, for our future boards to have to deal with. Okay, just to talk about the, the money out of the fund balance. It's been $600,000 for a number of years. And so as the budget grows, the $600,000 becomes less of a percentage of the total budget. So in that sense, we're using less. But the fund balance, let's remember, is from collected taxes. It isn't from borrowing. It isn't from bond anticipation notes. It's from past collected taxes. It is the taxpayer's money. It isn't a savings account. We're not saving for Christmas presents here. That's the taxpayer's money. The, the town of Amaranth this year, with a much smaller budget than ours, used over one, I think over $1.2 million. So, you know what, I mean, it's gotta be apples to apples. It isn't deficit spending. I don't care who looks up deficit in the dictionary. I, I don't care how you slice it. That's not deficit spending. And to say deficit spending means something very different in government. It, it means that you, 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 you're paying more than you have that the taxpayers have given. This is taxpayer money, Dan. It isn't a savings account that was saving for our kids for college. Um, the, sorry, done. This village is facing significant significant expenditures that it will have to uh, both fund in terms of debt and operating expenses. Um, far, far greater than we've ever faced in the last few years. Um, you, you know, it's in the, you know, um, depending on how you, you know, which, pro which projects and how they hit, 
it's you know um, between thirty and a hundred million dollars uh, that we that is facing what we have to do our share. This is this is quite significant and something that we need to worry about. Are we are we going to go broke tomorrow morning? Absolutely not. In decent financial shape now, absolutely. The question is to really take a very hard look at where we're going in the trends. And that's what I'm trying to suggest. And I think you all know that. I, I just want to point something out too. When I was last on the board uh, 10, 12 years ago, whatever the heck it was, we borrowed 25 million to do the firehouse and we borrowed another 16 million to do the library. So there were big expenses back then too. And it, it didn't, you know, it didn't mean that we didn't do them. It didn't mean that we didn't meet our financial obligation. You know, to fix our sewers, to fix our water supply, are you know, bondable long-term fixes that have to happen. So you know what I mean? Like I, I don't want to. I want to put this in some context because it isn't like we're at the end of the world, and it's just it, it's just not the case. You know, we don't have a bad fiscal condition. And you know we're not asking if you if we had a fair, fair fiscal condition you'd see a seven eight nine percent tax increase asked for here and we're not the, the staff came in with with a minuscule tax increase and because of you know stuff that we've recommended it's gone higher so let, let's let let's let's you know not be alarmist here either because you know th there is a good condition in this community and you know. Everybody was thinking that the world was going to fall apart financially because of COVID, and it didn't. And in fact, it looks like it's going to rebound very nicely. If you look at the, you know, the numbers that have been coming in lately, you know, from the national economy. So I understand that there's work that has to be done, and I understand that there are challenges, but I just don't want, I don't want there to be this impression that the sky is falling, because I don't believe that. I didn't say or imply the sky was falling, Tom. You've said that, I have mentioned it, I've never said that, but we have a trend and we have problems and we have to deal with them. I'm not saying we shouldn't deal with the problems, but I think we, but they, they should be put in contextual form. So can I, can I make a comment? No, please. So one of the things, you know, I've done a lot of the controller training and, and, and one of the things they say is when you're using fund balance, it's a one-shot deal. You never use it for recurring expenses. It's a one-shot deal. And you know if you and one of the other things you can do is if your fund balance is bigger than you think it should be, when ours is worth is within the range that our accountants and the controller's office are recommending, is that you think about how you're going to fund your capital projects. And that's not you know we tend to fund our capital projects by bonding things, but um, you know and we're we've just you know the staff has just done our like first you know five year capital plan. Um, but I think that, you know, we, we need to apply more sophisticated, continue, continue to apply more sophisticated methods to evaluating our budget. And I think that the staff has just has done a great job. Um, a lot of the staff has done more controller training too. And I think we just need to keep, I don't think that we're in desperate trouble now, but I think we want to, we need to plan for the future. It's not just about us when we're trustees, it's five years and 10 years and, and so on down the line. And I wanted to make, just respond to a comment that was made earlier, um, that no matter what our litigation costs are, and no matter what we might prefer to do with our money, as a municipality, we're really not able to take our cash and pay rent, much as we would like to. That isn't something we can do. So while I think our legal costs are exorbitant and we need to get them down, I'm not sure it's like apples to apples. I don't think we could, by saving money, I don't think we have the ability to then offset rent as much as I would like to do that. And I just want to sort of put that in in the in 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 the in the queue because we have very there's limited things government can spend money on or a, a municipal government like ours can spend money on. And we're not the federal government. We we don't have these abilities to run these great programs much as much as probably all of us would like to. Thanks. There's another resident with her hand up. Uh, Lynn Needle. I don't know. Unmute. You can hear me. Yes, ma'am. 
Thank you. Dear Mayor and members of the Village of Mamaroneck, let me introduce myself. I'm gonna talk fast because I know I have time limit. My name's Lynn Nydorf. My maiden name was Lynn Levy. I'm a lifelong resident, went to Mamaroneck High School, and I'm now living at 490 Bleecker. The sign that the Village of Mamaroneck posted at the end of Bleecker Avenue has literally created mayhem for the residents of 490. These conditions have the potential of resulting in either serious bodily injury or they could even become life threatening. Let me tell you what's happening. Literally, hundreds of unsupervised swimmers, paddle boaters, kayakers are at the risk of serious injury of death by entering the water precisely where larger motor boats are moving in and out of the harbor. Despite the condominium posting a no trespassing sign, hordes of beachgoers are coming to the end of Bleecker Avenue, climbing on our seawall and pier and creating the potential for serious injury or death, as well as creating potential liability for the village and for the people on either side of the beach. There are numerous road incidents and very unpleasant confrontations because of the overcrowded area on this very narrow roadway. The sanitary conditions are rapidly deteriorating due to numerous dogs defecating on the beach, as well as increased litter from the hordes of beachgoers. There is now, for the people who are paying much money to live at 490 Bleecker, diminished street parking, and an unacceptable level of street congestion and noise, even in the nighttime. Fireworks are being set off from the beach, and it, that's obviously dangerous. The chaotic situation has become a major problem for us and for the adjacent Orienta neighbors. So we, I, I'm on the board of 490, and we're, I'm representing the board and all of the other residents who many of us are sitting behind me tonight, and we urge the village of Mimarinek to take immediate action to correct this dangerous situation by creating some kind of a permanent ba barrier to block access to this private beach area. And also, I think it's costing you money because wouldn't these people be paying to launch in the harbor instead of coming free and clogging up our neighborhood? So that's what I have to say. And um, I hope you give immediate attention because this made our summer last year really, really difficult. Thank you, ma'am. Any questions? No, ma'am. That, that, you've been very cogent. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's no more from the Board of Trustees. I need a motion to adjourn the budget hearing until uh, the next Board of Trustee meeting, which is 26th of April. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustee Neuschert? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four. Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, next is a public hearing on PLLC 2021 tax cap override. Uh, what we've been doing is we have this on the agenda. Uh, we opened a public meeting and we've been adjourning it to the next public meeting in hopes that we'll never need it. Uh, I need a motion opening this public hearing. So moved. Second. Wait. Trustees Wenshrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Comments from the board? No comments from the audience. Uh, I need a motion adjourning this to April 26th. So I'm moved. Closing the public hearing. I'm sorry. So, so moved. Second, please. Yes. Will you call roll? Trustees Wenchup? Yes. Natchez? 
Yes. Lucas? Yes. Couture? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. All right. Now we get to the agenda. <laughs> uh, order the bills. 2A over budget accounts. Uh, authorization to execute budget transfers over budget accounts. Uh, just quickly, parks uh, to fund remaining uh, budget period contract services, uh, $7,600 to overtime, $7,600. Building department to fund additional in invoices for Jamie Keating, uh, money from part time salary to contract services, Marine Education Center to to fund equipment, radios, and microscopes, supplies, fish food, services, House of Fins invoices. They, they, they maintain the tanks. And for the remainder of the budget period, uh, from part-time salaries, $1,500 to equipment, $1,500. From part-time salaries, $2,000 to supplies, $2,000. Uh, from overtime line of $3,000 to contract services, $3,000. And the snow removal uh, to fund seasonal salaries, Taking one thousand nine hundred fourteen dollars from fuel and putting it to senior, senior uh, uh, sorry, to putting it to salaries. Employee benefits to, to fund current remaining expenses for MTA, MTA payroll tax and optical insurance. Uh, Fiker and Medicare they're taking eight thousand dollars and giving it to the MTA tax. Hospital and medical four thousand dollars goes to the. I said it right. Optical insurance. Uh, I'll make the motion to approve this resolution. I'll second. Okay, so sorry, you moved the, you the phone. Yeah. All right. Uh, Oi, call roll. Trustees Winship? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. DeFore? Yes. Mayor Murphy? All right. Thank you. Uh, the next is resolution authorizing to exec to execute budget amendment to fund legal contract services. This is take taking two hundred forty thousand dollars from fund balance and putting it into legal contract services. I want to make a motion. I want to pay these bills. Anybody have any questions of why they don't want to make a motion? All right, I'll make the motion. Sir. Can somebody second the motion? I will second the motion. I don't understand the hesitancy, but I don't understand the reasons. Well, okay, I need you to call a roll. Trustees Wentra. Yes. Trustee Natchez. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Tafour. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Mayor, may I ask for clarity? On the public hearing task cap override, we adjourned that to the 26th of April, correct? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Budget amendment for police department reimbursement overtime. Uh, this has to do. This has to do basically with the when when the police officers stand for a, a contractor. Is that right? That's correct. This is special detail. This is special detail. So we're moving one hundred ten thousand from police traffic reimbursement to one hundred ten thousand police overtime. So this is money that's been paid into the village for the police traffic reimbursement fund. These are revenues we're projecting to come in. That we need to amend the budget for. We're okay. amending the overtime, which is going to be coming from there. Okay. Can I have a motion? Is, is, motion? That, is, that, is that money already received, uh, Algi? This is that money already received. We're projecting through the end of May. Projecting, okay. We're projecting through the end of May. Okay, thank you, Algi. Yeah. Have a motion? So moved. Have a second? I'll do it. Trustees Wentrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? 
Yes. Mayor Murphy. Hi. And there's a lot of uh, work to police before the kind of work going on. So they're making hay while the sun is shining. The next up is the order of manual vouchers. Tonight it's 116,000, 668 questions or concerns. I do have a question if, if on page six, and I have questions about the White Osterman and Hannah bill for $5,135. No, this is this is on the manual. Oh, I'm sorry. Question, All right, I need a motion. Um, I, I'm abstaining because I'm conflicted in paying two of these bills. I'm recused in paying two of these bills. Oh, yeah. sure, sure, sure. He's in a manual. I'm vote. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still with Kelly. Okay. I'll move. So moved for the manual. I'll second. Orgy Cole. Trustees Wentrip. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Yes. Four. After you're muted. Still okay. Still I can't hear you. It's okay. Now I'm sorry. I pushed and it doesn't. The, the, uh, yes. Okay. Mayor Murphy. Aye. But I do have a, I do have a question on this one. Uh, on the, the the stonewall repair for the harbor is a thousand one one oh seven hundred and seven thousand dollars. Is that the final payment? Yes. Is that it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next up is the regular ordered uh, $542,237.97. Anybody have any questions or concerns? I do. Um, on page six, the White Osterman bill for $5,135.50. Um, I looked at the invoice from that and I'm, I have some questions because I think the descriptions in the invoice contradict what I understood our retainer agreement to be with them. There's, there, there are several items that have to do with preparation for meetings. And I thought that was just part of the retainer. And there's also a 900, about $960 in various areas um, used to review Stuart Teekert's email and answer his question about FOIL and open meetings law. So I, I thought that, um, I guess it wasn't FOIL, but it was his argument about the record. And so I felt when we talked to them, we made clear that we wanted counsel to read the mail that came in, email that came in with respect to applications so that they were aware of, you know, what was going into the record, what was part of the record and that, you know, so I, I just don't understand why why this wasn't all part of the retainer is my overall question. And I I don't see anything in there in the description in their invoice that to me looks like anything other than preparing for their meetings. So I just I want to be sure we're not getting billed for things that are supposed to be part of the retainer. I, I suggest I, I agree with you, but I suggest that we pay it tonight and have uh have Dan Sarnoff ask them about this tomorrow and uh, see if we can get uh, it worked out and get a reimbursement. That's fine with me. Dan? Yep. Uh, uh, a couple of things. First is I'm going to recuse myself on voting for the uh, voting on this because it has bills in it that I on the ABC that I recused on. Um, but I do have questions on non recusal matters that I'd like to ask on page. Wait, 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 wait. You're recusing yourself from voting on the whole packet? There's no way I can recuse myself otherwise because that's what's in front of us. That, but you're still asking questions on it? On things that I'm not recused on, that is important questions you know, as to what we're doing, yes. It seems incongruous. Mayor, 
it's, 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 it's the it's the way it has been presented to us to vote on. That doesn't mean that I can ask, cannot ask a question on something that has nothing to do with what I uh, am recusing myself on. If the audit, the audit of the bills were separated, that would be different, but we don't have it that way. And that's how it's presented to us. So my question is on page 40, regarding F.A. Cook Inc. for $2,400. Orders of the way down. And can you? Uh, I thought we bought equipment for this. What are we doing? Uh, that may be cleaning. Let, let, let me let me check the invoice. Uh, let me just find the correct page, and I'll look up the voucher. Do you have another question while he's looking that up? Yeah, um, Augie, on, well, we'll take page 44. Some of the uh, consultants' bills have stars on them and don't. Some of them say escrow and some of them don't. Um, are the ones that don't have that say escrow, meaning that they are not escrow uh, related? Yeah, on page 44, the reason why those stars are there, I believe, is. So, uh, for instance, on page 44, the last item for 787. The last item is uh, 30, uh, on page 34 for $932, 72 and 787. Those are 787.50 on, on page 40, um, 44, 47 at the bottom. Yes, those are all escrow accounts. Again? Those are all escrow accounts. Okay, so what we need to do is be careful that they all say escrow because I don't think it does unless it, I've missed it. All of these accounts on page 44 are escrow accounts. Okay, then, yeah, but some of them say escrow and some of them don't. That's, that's my confusion. It'd be helpful if they all, if they all said that. <coughs> okay, sorry, if you have this answer. Because that, that 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 clears up my other two questions. Yeah, thank you. So just on the um, on the Freddie Cook, that was for <clears throat> a video inspection of uh, a sanitary sewer at, uh, on uh, Gertrude and Ralph. This is trying to uh, locate a a feature that was missing in one of our reports. So this is following up on uh, some uh, old uh, sanitary sewer. Uh, uh, reports that we've been doing as part of the uh, 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 the uh, uh, do what we do in order to achieve the items in that order of consent order on consent that we have. No, no, I, I understand. Okay, but, but I think it's we, also, we, I, I, oh. we can't do this in house is what I'm hearing. Not not yet. I think there's um, in the town, there's still they they don't I think we've used it a couple of times, but I think they're still learning all the bells and whistles of the system. Okay. So I think we needed a cook to get something done that was of an immediate concern. If, if you could check out and let us know at the next meeting. Thank you. Yep. Victor? I have a question for Dan and another for, for, for the trustee Natchez and Lucas. I'll start with one for Dan Sarno. It's page 13 is from the top of my head is like a 49 or $50,000 bill from the town of Mamaroneck uh, on sewer fee rent. Uh, are they are we are they charging us sewer fees? Oh, no, I, I believe that's the was that uh, the county sewer tax? Mm -hmm. uh, because the town of Mamaroneck is the collection agent for Westchester County. Okay. Uh, we pay our sanitary sewer tax, the county sanitary sewer tax to them 
you're talking about, yeah, $48,511 and 45 cents. So it's, it's for the county through the town. Okay. Yeah, the town is Thank the collection that. agent for the county. Okay. So that's why I had actually had made sure it said the uh, county sewer tax on the line item. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Uh, for, for, for it, did I hear that Trustee Lucas and Natchez are recusing because of something that's paid relating to something where they're recused? Yes, I am. Are you gonna, yes. you think you can't vote on this? Uh, well, you know, I, I don't think I can. And I actually recall when, I don't know, I remember when Tom was previously on the board, he didn't vote to pay, he wouldn't vote um, to pay a law firm that his wife worked for. So I don't know. Well, I think where you're going with Victor is where I'm going with it as well, because we pay Hampshire legal fees and I vote on those, though I'm recused on Hampshire. And Victor votes for Save the Sound work. And no, and, nobody can approve and, this, right? And, and we will not be able to pay any bills because we will not reach three votes on any any one of these ever again if if this is the way it works. Well, and, and maybe this is maybe this is something uh, we should talk about. I think this will, can I finish? Sorry. Because this may be something that we want to discuss as a group with Bob as advice of counsel. Um, and if Bob thinks that would be prudent, I'm happy to ask that we do that. Uh, I think that the solution is we just segregate those bills out. And that way they can, they can, there's a majority of the board that can be able to pay them. So what? So basically we pull out the bills on which people are recused and the other members can vote. It's a little awkward, but. The way the abstract was prepared for this meeting is everything is in one thing. And, and it's always been like that. And if, you know, like, I, I understand that, but uh, I haven't been I think, in the position of having to recuse on, you know, on uh, retaining uh, people and uh, not party to that. So uh, that that's a big issue. You've already said you're recused. Uh, I wish you would have asked for advice uh, from you know the attorney or the ethics board uh, before you did it. Uh, I don't think you had to do it. Uh, I, I, you know this 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 is a different situation from uh, something where I had a my my wife working in the firm where it could be you know construed that I was financially benefit. This isn't the situation here. Uh, so, so that is, you know, I, I don't know where that analogy. So I, I, while we're figuring this out, let's just pull those bills out that people feel they can't pay. Is that, well, or, or figure it out. Kelly, you're right. I mean, either we figure it out or we. I mean, maybe what we can do is, I don't know, maybe you can say, you know, Yes, I approve this abstract. But I'm recusing. But, but, not, but not for anything from which I'm recused. And Victor could, you know, and, and then it passed. I don't know. I think you can do that. But I think you would need to identify what you're recusing on, what matter. Okay, that's I'm easy. Sure that there are three votes for everything. Okay. Okay. I could do that. I think that's logical. I mean, this, you know, I know we're trying to be careful and appropriate, and then the sometimes, you know, perfect is the enemy of the good. I, I wish you would avail yourself of the legal advice we have. You know, Tom, sometimes, sometimes your weeks just don't go as you'd like them to do. And I really had this weekend to think about it. And I had a few other things. I, I really couldn't get an ethics opinion this weekend. So. Very candidly, I asked for the uh, bills uh, when I saw when I got the stuff, which was Friday night. So I asked for it Monday morning. Uh, I got the them, found that there was a problem. That's the fastest that can be done. Okay. Uh, so I don't know uh, how how you could have accelerated that. You know, you talk to each other about it. Okay. Uh, I have a question about the bills. We don't have a statement about it on page six. Uh, McCarthy Fingar, $29,592.50 uh, for the Article 78 uh, for Mr. Tigard's place at 130 Beach Avenue. I just want to go through what happened here. Uh, Mr. Tigard 
was uh, found by the building department to have an illegal apartment. They gave him, I believe it was seven violations. They asked him to clear the violations. Instead of clearing the violations, he went to the zoning board and appealed to the zoning board. That was his decision. The zoning board had to hire an attorney to represent them because Mr. Spolzino represented the building department that incurred an expense to his community. Uh, after many, many, many months at the zoning board, the zoning board decided that Mr. Teeger did have an illegal apartment. Mr. Teeger then decided to sue the zoning board. The village of Americ had an obligation to defend the zoning board. At any time in the course of this, Mr. Teeger could have corrected the violations and removed his illegal apartment. He did not. So when, when people talk about uh, expenses and you know what is uh, making a village spend all of this, all that was required in this situation was for him to remove his illegal apartment. He could have made it an actual borders apartment and come into compliance, but he chose to keep suing us and he still has another uh, appeal before the zoning board, which is gonna cost this community money. But uh, just so everybody knows, Mr. Teeger lost in New York State Court today. The decision came out affirming the zoning board's decision that he has an illegal apartment. So that's where we are. The, the decision of the zoning board has been vindicated by New York State Court. And right now we are voting to pay a bill of $29,592.50 that the Village of America taxpayers have to shoulder to prove what was obvious from the beginning. And also on the agenda here tonight, uh, is Goldstein foil litigation of $11,246. Ms. Goldstein, a member of the planning board, is suing the village of Amaranek uh, on a, a foil violation, uh, which has now cost the village of Amaranek $11,246. And I, I, I would bet that this has the same ending as the TCAR uh, lawsuit. But th when people say, why are litigation costs so high? because people choose to sue the village. That's all I have to say about this. Anybody else? Okay. I need a motion. We got are, you, are you, are we recusing of, are you recusing of those or what are we doing one by one? I mean, you, I- You don't I, want to pay those two? I, what, what are we saying? What are we doing now? We're, we're voting on the asterisk. That's okay. what I'm going to ask for. My suggestion, Victor, was that to the extent that you have to recuse, you identify the matter that uh, requires recusal. And that way, if that way, we can see that if there are three votes for everything. Okay. Can I bring the motion in for everything if I'm going to recuse on part? Yes. Okay. Motion then, identify it. Then so moved. I second. Okay, as we go, as we go through, tell you what you're refusing to put. Trustee Winstrup. Yes, but recusing on any payments having to do with the Hampshire litigation. Well, he's writing it down, so it's gonna take a second. Yeah. Trustee Natchez? Accusing on anything having to do with AVC properties. And yes, for everything else. Trustee Lucas? Um, yes, but recusing on anything having to do with ABC properties or 130 Beach Avenue. Trustee to four? Yes, except uh, payment really in, in relation to the Save the Sound litigation. Uh, may, it may also appear here as Connecticut Fund for the Environment.
Mayor hey, Murphy? I'm voting on everything. <laughs> voting on everything. Good for you. <laughs> I thought you were recused in two or three. No? Okay. I'm not recused. Okay, good. I have no conflicts. I sleep. <laughs> I need to sleep right now. <laughs> you need a conflict-free life. Good for you. Uh, old business. Uh, resolution appointing chair of a traffic committee. Uh, I don't think we have that, do we? We do not. Thank you. Uh, resolution awarding contract on Hillside Avenue Bridge. Uh, the staff asked that that be whole. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, or A... Resolution rescinding nine minute parking restriction from 817 to 952 West Boston Post Road. That is in front of us. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns? Mr. Sano, thank you for your work on this. Thank you. Okay, I will make the motion. A second. Fusco. Trustees Winship? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you all very much. CDG, EDBG grant, it's Community Development Block Grant, uh, scheduling a public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant program. This is a scheduled public hearing uh, to talk about what Community Development Block Grants will be. Uh, Made in the village of, uh, asked for in the village of America, both from uh, the board of trustees and from not for profits in the community. This was scheduled a public hearing on April the 26th. Any questions or concerns? So, is this is this just for discussion, or are we actually approving the grant applications that we're going to file? It's just to have a public hearing where we will talk about the grant application. What? Okay. So, what's the filing deadline? Uh, I believe the filing deadline is uh, towards the end of June or the end of July. I can't remember right now, but it's okay. Okay, uh, it, 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 it's it's several months away. Great. So moved. If we're ready, a second. Okay, that's great. Uh, call the roll, please. Welcome. Trustees Wentrup. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The floor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, resolution scheduling public hearing for metered parking on West Boston Post Road. They want us to hold off on that. Needs a little more work. Uh, resolution authorizing tax search area settlements, 214, 216 Rockland Avenue, uh, and 139 Dubois, and 413, 415 Tompkins Avenue, which I believe is the same property. Um, First item we will take. I'm sorry, let's put this food up here. I think it was a mess. Uh, okay, is uh, 214 216 Rockland. Mm -hmm. uh, reduces the assessment by $2,231.71. Everybody have the resolution in front of them? Yeah. Any questions or concerns? No. Okay. Any motion? Uh, actually, Glenn's hand is yeah. up. Go, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. Th these are all um, sur sororities um, ending. Uh, 2014 that we had to defend as the village of Mamarnik, uh from right. there from before we had in uh, we lost our assessor's office, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir Sir Yeah, Sir Okay, we have a motion. So moved. Second. Please. Trustees Wentrup? Yes. Hatches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, what's the next one is the resolution uh, 229 Union Avenue Corporation versus the Village of Amarinic. Uh, so it's 139 Dubois, 
and uh, 1413, 1415 uh, Tompkins. How do you say it in the Do you say Dubois or Du Bois? They're very pronounced both ways. Anybody have any? Sal, you grew up here. What are you asking where Dubois is? No, I know where it is. But some <laughs> I say Dubois. Say, some people say Du Bois. In W. E. B. Du Bois was a famous African American writer. And some people say, I, 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 I'm just wondering if there's a colloquial pronunciation that I don't want to screw up. And I was asking. I say Dubois. Du Bois? Du Bois? Is that what you I say Dubois. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you too, Nora? Yep. Yep. I want to have the right dialect. Turns into a song, you say du bois, bra, I say du bois. Let's uh, get okay. Tom to sing it. <laughs> uh, Getting late. Motion. So moved. Second. Thank you. Uh, please call the roll. Trustee Weintraub? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. MEC? Donation, resolution accepting, accepting touch tank donation to the Marine Education Center. Uh, and this is a generous gift from John Cuddy and uh, Nina Recchio of $50 uh, to help uh, with the touch tank displays, which are very popular with uh, kids and those that are young at heart down at the Marine Education Center, which will be opening up uh, regular weekend hours in the very near future. The motion? So moved. Second. Please go to roll. Trustees Weintraub? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Aye. Uh, communication for board round two. That's one. Yes. Um... A couple of things on the um, re, uh, the uh, unspent funds. Uh, you've referred to it. We have fourteen million something dollars. We have twelve million four sixty four as of May thirty first. We have. Um, um, balance funds that are unspent. We have another 2000 in balance funds that are restricted. When you originally passed the law, I told you that if you're going to do the 30% looking to do a policy of 30%, you had to know which balance you were going against. But when you talk about available unspent fund balance we have 12 and a half million dollars not 14 million dollars which is probably about 30 percent of the budget the other thing and i just want to reiterate this one more time when i speak about items on the budget i am never attacking the staff of the village of america who i have the greatest respect for what i am pointing out is there's some things in the budget that do have to be removed because we're not doing them and if you are going to do Florence Park tennis, the trustees have to act upon that in order for that program to happen. If the trustees don't want to charge for Florence Park, then that 40000 in revenue has to come out of the budget. Tom, greatest respect for, for the staff. And they are limited to what they, what they are given. My job as an individual and also as a member of the budget committee is to look outside of that and have a different perspective. It doesn't mean that I couldn't turn around and go out to lunch with every one of the staff members and tell them how proud I am of them. It says, so you don't have to be so defensive. It says, I, 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 I've said it at virtually every time I've said how much I appreciate the staff and the hard work they do with the budget. Sometimes there's things that we can agree to disagree on. And, and, and I really do appreciate everybody 
And I really don't want to get Sally mad at me because she knows where to bury the bodies in the village. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks. Good evening again. This is going to be a real love fest, uh, Mayor and members of the Board of Trustees. Uh, I just want to wrap up my thought before before they play the music to me for me to get off. Um, I know that some of the chairs from the various land use boards and committees have, um, at the conclusion of their meetings, indicated they're going to prepare a memo to the Board of Trustees for assistance specifically with the rewrite of some of the language is antiquated. So again, I wanted to wrap that up and going full circle. Having served on a board in the past, a land use board, um, it is a incredibly challenging job. I respect every individual who's on that. And as I kind of concluded at the, um, at the part one of my public comment, um, I know and I have the confidence of everybody that's sitting, if you were sitting at the dais or at home right now, uh, and working in conjunction with the members of the land use boards to arrive at a, a very seamless and productive path. Two, um, there was comments earlier about Bleecker Avenue. I know the Oriental Point Association, we have a board meeting tomorrow night, mayor and members of the board, if there's anything we can do to assist, I don't know what the final resolution is on that with regards to public private, but uh, we do have a board meeting tomorrow night. I'll make sure we put this on our agenda. If there's anything we can do as an organization, a neighborhood organization on behalf of Oriental Point, Point, let us know and we'll certainly be of assistance however possible. Um, and rounding third here, um, I was in touch with Catherine Parker last week, and I understand that a letter was written to uh, Chuck Schumer, Senate Majority Leader, on March 3rd with regards to the ACE project. Uh, this is something that is absolutely pivotal for the entire community. I'm hoping with this renewed infrastructure plan by President Biden, that we absolutely do all that we can to try to get this, this back on track. As many of you know, we were fortunate enough to get the second bite at the apple. And I'm hoping with our liaison, Trustee Weinstrup uh, and the Board of Trustees, we're able to get the third bite uh, because this is something that is desperately needed. And again, this is something that if there's anything I can do, as the, many of you recall, I was there with uh, Trustee Torfur down and we testified before the Army Corps uh, to get uh, approval. So please, if there's anything we can do to do this collectively, um, it's, it's paramount and especially in light of the fresh eyes that we have working on this, please let me know um, or anyone know. And finally, I'm really pleased to share with everyone that Little League, baseball, soccer, schools are back we are returning back to what we hope to be a normal life. So uh, the, the lights at the end of the tunnel here, folks, we were getting through it. So positivity all around. Great job. And, and if I may conclude, it's been a while since I've watched a meeting in, in, in its entirety. You have marshaled through this with very difficult topics this evening and in a seamless manner. So well done, Mayor and um, trustees. It was actually pleasant to watch tonight. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Okay. Update from the village manager. Do you have anything? Uh, nothing to report, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clerk Treasurer. Yes, Mayor. Those license expire April 30, 2021. Renewals will be mailed to existing license holders. That is all, Mayor. Village attorney. Nothing from me, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, minutes of the board of minutes, commission boards and committees, minutes of the board of trustees work session and regular meeting, March 22nd, special work sessions of March 15th and March 24th and work sessions, March 29th, minutes of HCZMC meetings on December 19th and January, December 19th, 2020 and January 20th, 2021. Minutes of the Ethics Board of February 11th and February 25th, 2021. Minutes of the Tree Committee of February 23rd, 2021. Minutes of the Planning Board meetings of December 9th, 2020, January 13th, January 27th, and February 10th, 2021. Uh, before we adjourn tonight, I just want to tell people that the vaccines are now open to everybody over 18 years old. Uh, please make your appointment. Uh, as was pointed out before, uh, we have a lot of hope on the horizon, but there's still a lot of people getting sick. 
and there's a lot of people dying. And in some parts of the country, it is raging. And don't think it can't happen here, because it can. Uh, don't let your guard down. Keep wearing your mask. Keep washing your hands. Keep social distancing. You know, thankfully, a lot of us are vaccinated, especially those of us of a certain age. But uh, this is still a very, very deadly disease. And, you know, nobody wants to be the last person in this country to die of COVID. You know, and it would be hospitalized because of COVID. So let's just all keep our guard up uh, for the rest of uh, you know the time being, so that you know we could all pull through this, and we could all uh, move forward and get on with our normal lives. So that being said, I would like a motion to adjourn. Move. Uh, second. All in favor. Good night. Aye. Good night. Aye and bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.